deliver. Oh, hello, goodbye. Even though it's been a huge success, next year it will be stronger and better. I've seen a lot of the big tournaments around the world. This has been one of the most exciting and indeed rewarding things I've been a part of. It's been one of the best experiences of my life. I've loved every minute of it. It's been brilliant. I'm looking forward to next year already. SA20 is one for the future. What an exceptionally exhilarating experience that it was. Yes, indeed, season one was packed with all the excitement. And for me, I have to introduce the man that I saw on many flights and our legend himself, Graham Smith, the commissioner of the Betway SA20. How are you do, Gra doing, Graham? Good, Good and you, Billy. <laughs> and tell me, you obviously were part of this experience. We were on flights together. We were in stadiums together. We saw everything from the beginning to the end, from the auction. How was the experience for you? What were the highlights? Yeah, it was a surreal season. I mean, I'll never forget standing in those uh, first uh, stadiums, the first six games at uh, you know, all the stadiums around the country and experiencing the live action, the fans, uh, the way the fans took to their teams. Uh, some excellent cricket was played in season one as well. Uh, you know, us as a league, we want to see an exciting season of cricket, the tight log table. We got that in season one. And today we had the auction to see the finalization of the teams and, and hopefully another successful season. Talking about a successful season, we've spoken about the experience of the past season. Now we're speaking about the, the actual core cricket. What can we expect in this coming season of the Betway SA20? Yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot of the same, same especially from a fan engagement perspective. perspective. You know, we want our fans that come to the stadiums that leave with a, a, a new and a fun-filled experience. But at the core, we'll always be a cricket product, and we want to see excellent cricket. Um, you know, today is a mini auction. Our teams have put together the majority of their squads, um, but 15 players in the auction to be selected, six rookies, which was the introduction. So. Exciting, exciting from, from the end, end of today, today we'll know exactly, exactly the composition of our squads and, and the challenges, challenges that lie ahead i've spoken to you as a commissioner i want to speak to you as a cricket legend who's played at some of these stadiums you've filled them out you sold them out how was that experience watching that come to life well, well it, was it, was it was terrific to see domestic cricket come to life again you know to see stadiums full i mean someone was telling me the last time a domestic game was sold out at the wonders could have been in the 90s so you know to see that come to life too for, for our young players our local players to experience that type of fandom in their own country, you know, to have uh, their, their locals come out in droves to support them. It was terrific, you know, and PE and Sunrise is going on to win, I think was a great story for the Eastern Cape. And, and this year, this starting with this auction, we hope there's some new stories that will come to life. That's amazing. We've had amazing things happen at the last year's auction. Talking about amazing things happened at the last year's auction, we also had the, one of the teams that won last year, which was the Cape Town Sun, um, Eastern Cape Sunrise, uh, Sunrises, and they're here, they want to speak to us. We've got Tristan Stubbs, we've got Dale Stain. Ash was going to talk to them for a minute let's talk to them quickly thank you Kobile and I am indeed at the table of the reigning champions the Sunrisers Eastern Cape and with me I've got the legendary Proteus fast bowler the bowling coach of the Sunrisers and the big money signing of the first year Tristan Stubbs Dale let's come to you first you've tran transitioned from tormenting batters over the years to the dugout Tell us your experience about being in the dugout, a successful dugout, of course, in the first season. Yeah, uh, Mash, it was, it was great, actually. I loved it. Um, I feel like I've still got one foot in the, in the dressing room <laughs> as a player and one foot in the coaching staff, which is great. So I've got a great relationship with a lot of the players. Uh, still, I'm still young enough to kind of go out with them and, and mix with them, whether it be in the surf or, you know, on the cricket field, if I had to... Uh, throw on the throw on the, on the shoes and the, and the gear but um, and then I can also be in the dressing room with the with the coaches where we can talk about strats and who we're gonna play and which players we want to go with and conditions and, and that kind of thing so it's it's been a nice transition for me um, and I'm sure as I get older and I get more into the coaching staff I'll probably drift away from the players <laughs> but for now it's it's fantastic to still have a great bond with the players. Brilliant tell us now it was a slow start for the Sunrisers, but then there was a turning point. Where exactly do you think was a turning point for the Sunrisers? Yeah, probably one player, actually, um, Rulo van der Maver. You know, originally, I don't think we kind of had him in our plans to play. We wanted to play a leg spinner in um, Mason Crane. Um, and Rulo's just one of those guys that you, you just can't leave out of the team. Uh, and the owners and a lot, of, a lot of press and push came from India where they wanted to see a guy like Rulf on the, on the field. He's the kind of guy that's just, he's got this never give up kind of attitude. And almost a Cinderella story because he's been around South Africa for ages. He's played for South Africa, he's gone on to play for Netherlands now. And he just had the tournament of his life. Um, and he just took us from being in a position where we were doing okay, but to a team that where 
opposition kind of looked at us and they went, oh, this team's going to show up today. You know, if they're down and out, they've got players that is, that's going to drag them out of the dirt and be able to win games. And I think it was all down to that one guy. Fantastic. An absolute superstar of the first season was Rula van der Merwe. Now we've got the main man, Tristan Stubbs. Tristan, the band is synonymous with atmosphere at St. George's Park. And to add to that, the Orange Army. Tell us about playing in front of the Orange Army last season. Yeah, um, playing at St. George's last year was definitely um, the fav my favourite ground to play at. Um, the way they get behind you, um, especially when you're winning at home. Um, half my mates are there in the band, <laughs> a couple of beers deep and just really enjoying the day. So I love playing the home ground. So, yeah. Fantastic. And then obviously the question that everybody wants to know, 9.1 million. Big pressure with the, with the signing on fee. Tell us about that. Yeah, I, I definitely felt it last year. Um, I think it gets to you uh, at some stage. Probably affected my cricket a little bit, which um, is a negative, but um, I've learned to deal with it um, and I can take those learnings into the season. Well, we have every confidence that you'll come good this year. Right, we'll head over to the JSK and with Sean Pollock is Donovan Ferreira. Yes, Ash, here I am. I'm sitting with Donovan Ferreira. Donovan, first of all, have you got used to the yellow? I mean, you haven't worn yellow much, but are you nicely acclimatised to the yellow of the Super Kings? Yeah, I mean, obviously wearing it all season, last season, and it's, it's a nice bright colour, so we stand out nicely. So, yeah, I think it's a very nice colour to have. OK, you were involved, obviously, last year. You went for a good lot of money, but just tell us a little bit about the experience. Where were you? Were you watching on the TV? Um, you weren't taken in the original block. You had to wait until the express section. Were you nervous that you weren't going to be taken? Tell us through the emotions that you went through. Yeah, so I mean, obviously, um, I was at home, had the TV on, naturally. Um, everyone, I think everyone was watching the auction. And um, yeah, it got a bit frustrating. I said that I wanted to actually turn off the TV because <laughs> not getting picked up, you know, you're just like, oh, let me just put it off because it's, it's going to come up late. And then once it happened, I couldn't believe that it was real because the bid just kept on going higher, higher and higher and then eventually that even stopped the auction because um, teams ran out of money. So, yeah, what a life-changing experience and I'm sure a lot of guys are going to experience that tonight as well. You've got to cool a lot of international staff and also international players. Tell us the experience of that. Do you learn a lot off them or was it just, just a great experience for a young person like yourself? Yeah, so I mean, obviously being involved with, with a franchise like this firstly is amazing. Um, and then, you know, playing under Fuff. Um, you know, he's got so much experience and he's an amazing captain. And then, you know, Stephen Fleming as our coach, yes, he's so cool, cool and calm, you know, in the changing room. And he just actually backs the players and allows the players to express themselves. So that's really something that, you know, as a young player, you expect the coach to, you think the coach is going to be hectic and he's going to be on you the whole time, but he actually just backs your skill and just says, listen, you're here for a reason, so just go express yourself. Okay, well, if you have a look at the list here, David Visa, Mo and Ali, Zahir Khan, Sam Cook. Those are your pre signings new players. Are you quite excited about getting to play with those guys? Yeah, I mean, obviously, they, they're very amazing players and they, they flip in um, all their names. You know, if you see the names on the list over there, they, they're just special. I mean, Dave Visa, Mo and Ali, like you said, all four of them are going to bring something new to the team and I'm excited and they, they're something that we need. Um, so they're going to express themselves and they're going to make the Joburg family proud. Okay, well, that's uh, the other good thing is you were pretty young when you were selected, so you'll know what it feels like for the rookies. An exciting new addition to this mm. SA 20 number, version number two. Do you think they'll be nervous? Do you think they'll be quite um, excited about the possibility of being picked up? Yeah, so I think all the rookies will be quite nervous, but I think there'll be loads of excitement because they were watching the SA 20 last mm. year. So, I mean, for them, it'll be a dream come true. And I'm sure they're going to learn a lot um, in this SA 20, and hopefully us as players can give back to them and actually just boost them so they can rise and reach their full potential. Brilliant. OK, well, talking about rookies, we might just have a rookie with Pommy and Bangwa. I'm not too sure, Pom. Give us some in luck. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm here. And this is this is particularly important, this Paul Royals, um, what do you call this thing? It's like a swat, a fly swat. Oh, paddle. Yeah, paddle. <laughs> they, thank you. The, the, the bundles were gone. <laughs> anyway, never mind. Goodness, Uncle C is alongside. I, I know nobody says that, right? Small Cooks. <laughs> okay, Cooks is here. And I'm particularly excited to have this young man alongside. Gwenda Mapaka. Gwenda, how are you? I'm all good, thanks. How are you? No, no, you can speak louder than that. It's okay. <laughs> Don't worry. Nobody's listening to us. It's just you and me. No, and, I'm all good. And I'm Cooks. All good. You're good? Yeah, I'm all good. How yeah, excited? Happy. How was school today? Oh, school was okay, you know. It's just school. <laughs> that that's particularly important. The guy's 17 years old. Uh, what were you doing when you were 17? 
I was just trying to get through exams. I mean, that, 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 that was my plan. I mean, this guy's about to build against the best batsman in the world. But Quinn, I want to know, did the grade eights treat you differently now that uh, you're going to be part of the Betra SA20? Uh, you know, the grade eights, um, I don't think they treat me too differently. <laughs> uh, there's always been like a sense of respect. I respect them, they respect me. And I think it's going to stay that way. Okay, tell me when you knew, when you found out, what happened, who told you, who called you to say you're going to be picked by the Powell Royals, you're going to be a, a rookie in SA20. Yeah, so um, I was actually in the car and my dad got a call on the phone um, and it was Richard Daz Neves from, mm -hmm. from the Royals and he was kind of just like, you know what, we want your son and you know, um, <laughs> yeah, we want your son and hopefully like, you know, we can get him. And so I got home and I kind of just like took a minute to recollect myself. I was ecstatic over the moon. It was, it was really good experience. Okay, so was that on speaker or was he just talking to your dad and then your dad told you? No, it was on speaker. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice, so you like found out. And then what's school been like since? Not, not so much the grade eight, but I'm talking about your first team mates your teammates what have you spoken about and how much have they watched of this competition in season one yeah so um we kind of had this thing like uh every game in joburg we would try to go watch and so they've been very invested in the sa20 and i think uh ever since uh, i've been called up there's been a lot of banter a lot of jokes a lot of nicknames but it's all in good fun mm. you look at the team that you're playing for quinn i mean it's a great side i mean so many international the Josh butlers is there anyone in particular you're looking forward to, to meeting and just obviously just chatting to in the nets or to learning from? Yeah, so I'm definitely, I'm looking forward to meeting Jason Roy. He's actually one of my best friend's uncles, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Uncle or cousin, <laughs> something like that. So uh, looking really forward to meeting him. I've spoken to him once. Um, and I think it's going to be amazing to learn from him and amazing to learn from all the other players. Have you told my bounce is coming? <laughs> 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 I think something that's important also is you, you've got to figure out, you know, how you're trying to see how old Dame Villas is kind of been playing along. You know Dame, right? Yeah. Yeah? Mm hmm. Mm. Mr. Villas? <laughs> no? Okay, don't do that. Okay? This is a pretty impressive moment. It's an important moment for Quena. Congratulations, by the way. Let me Thank shake you. your hand Thank you and say much. all the best. Enjoy it. Take it all in like a sponge from all these guys. These are the names of the Paul Royals. Let's hope he has a good one. An important moment from last season as well. What about this? Well played, Pat. That's picked up. That's picked up superbly. Now, Pat showing all his experience here. Well done, Pat Duplessis. Lovely. Beautiful timing. Yeah, leading from the front here to Captain Pat Duplessis. 4-6 tonight for Pat Duplessis. That's six more. Fat. Fat. More fat. This has been sensational stuff. Absolutely sensational. Magnificent performance for Pat Duplessis. It is the first bit right. SA 20 under. There's another to the crowd. There's more runs. There you go. Oh, wonderful striking. That's more. Six more. Bang! Six more. Yeah. He middles it. Yeah, that's it. The arms are up in the air. He punches the air. And what a fantastic knock that is from Henry Clausen. He has put on a display. Supreme hitting here. Just like that. And it's off the middle of the bat again for Markram. Oh, well, there's a mark. That's a fabulous hit. Another 16, Markram. High, hard, and out of the playing area. Shot, shot, oh yes, oh yes, what about
thought that to bring up a hundred. Hello, Rain One is calling. It's one plan for your home and phones with free calls and data every month. Get two free mobile lines, each with two free gigs, 60 free minutes, 100 free SMS every month. Switch to Rain One. Unlimited 5G home Wi-Fi plus free calls and data every month for two phones, all for only five five nine a month. And you can buy now and pay later. Uh huh. Legacy in the all new Suzuki Grand Vitara, starting from only 339.900. T's and C's apply. To give you the best takes the best. The best hands. The best handling. The best care. And the best conditions. To bring you the best local fresh produce. The best of local, whatever it takes. Hey. In this world of filters, AI and what what, they can make me look like this. Or that. Or even... <laughs> They can make anything seem real, but they can't make one of these. Spurs Cheddar Melt Full Chicken Schnitzel or 200 gram Lampo Sirloin at only 134.90. That's nothing but real Cheddar Melt value. Right, we've got one of South Africa's absolute rising superstars next to me, Diabal Brevis. Diabal, tell us just about your experience about playing in the first ever SA20. No, it has been crazy. Um, if I have to think of the first game where it all started, like all the fans was there, like the old back Newland. So um, I must say it's exciting um, if you look at all the local talent. Um, it's, it's such a great platform for everyone to showcase their talent and to show who they are. Um, and yeah, like, the atmosphere is unbelievable and it's so nice to play in your home in South Africa and to enjoy it out there. Now, obviously, Mumbai Indians unsuccessful campaign, but let's po focus on the positives of Mumbai Indians and you going to the US and having a successful campaign there with New York. I just want you to share a little bit with us about being part of that Mumbai Indians family, obviously, around the world. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. Unfortunately, the first season didn't go as we wanted. But, um, yeah, we're looking to definitely do much better this next season. But, yeah, all the teams that MI owns and over the world, like, our philosophy and everything stays the same. It's to play an exciting brand of cricket. Um, it was great to be able to win the tournament in the MLC, and that's what we're looking to do also in the SA20 and everywhere. And yeah, to just to be a part of the family, it's amazing. Um, you can't ask for a better family. Now, we all have come accustomed to you being a swashbuckling opening batsman going in first with the uh, MLC tournament, we saw you in the middle order. How have you enjoyed the transition and some of the differences between batting in the, at the top and in the middle order? Um, I always tell people when you bat um, at the top, um, you're just batting and you're creating a situation. And when you're batting four, like you, you're just playing the situation that is created by your openers. Um, I've really enjoyed batting four as well. Um, wherever, like I always say, wherever the team wants me to play, I'll give my best in that. But yeah, just you as a player, you develop wherever you bat and you make the most out of it. And there's always 
always a challenge wherever you bat and four was a nice challenge like lots of good um, like situations out there and it was great to be able to do well for the team there. Fantastic. Dear Bob, dear Vos, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for his time, dear Bob. And now we're going to throw just to a little bit of an educational piece about the upcoming season. South Africa's explosive T20 League, the Betway SA20 is back. Franchises are planning their teams ahead of the season two player auction. Let's break it down to see how the process works. The salary cap. Each season, teams are given a salary cap to spend on players. For season two, the salary cap has been increased by 5.1 million rand to 39.1 million per team. Player slots. Each team has 19 slots in the final squad. One wild card. One rookie player. And the balance of 17 players. What is a rookie? A South African player aged 22 or younger on the day of the auction and who is new to the Betway SA20 League. What is a wild card? This is a local or international player whose fee is excluded from the salary cap. The deadline for wild card selection is the 30th of December. How do teams free up player slots in their squads? Teams can retain a player, trade a player, buy a player out of his contract, or release a player. Following this, teams will have their preliminary squads and this will determine the number of player slots available at the auction. After the auction, squads will be finalized for season two. Tune into Supersport for all the action on the 27th of September. It's the 27th, so yes, this is when it's happening. And do you know what? There's a man here who can explain. It's easy enough when you kind of, you know, everyone's saying, this is what happens, that's what happened. You look through a graphic and so forth, but it's better when you hear it from the horse's mouth. The head of Cricket Operations SA20, Stephen Cook. Stephen, what's important? What must they all know? What must we know as we go into season two? Yeah, no, I mean, very exciting. I mean, second second season of doing this. Last year, you know, squads were a lot emptier. Mm. This season, we have a, a lot more of a framework to work with. Um, so I think we're going to see a few more niche picks. Um, different teams need different things. You know, Durban Super Giants just need one uh, to complete their squad, and uh, someone like Pretoria Capitals need a whole lot more. So we're going to see a little bit of a different approach. Um, but I think come the end of today, there'll certainly be some stories. Um, I mean, the rookie is obviously a, a major yeah. talking point, but there's certainly going to be some stories. So 21 new contracts given out uh, through the day, and uh, yeah, there'll be, uh, there'll be some tales. Yeah, Sean, he speaks about rookie, and you were talking to um, Donovan. Donovan earlier, and speaking about nerves and all the rest. Speak about the importance of that and sort of kind of building things with this framework that kind of is a beginning, as he says, as we go along. Yeah, I mean, they were talking about their legacy, mm. and, and, and it's great. I mean, we know the well-known players, we know the overseas players that come in. But ideally, from the SA perspective, we want some new youngsters to mm. come through. And I think that's why this initiative is so fantastic, because you've got six youngsters who are going to be embraced into the side. Whether they play, we'll have to wait and see. Maybe they get a game when the team's qualified, or, or maybe they actually have to step up to the plate. But the learning experience from international coaches, international South African players, international overseas players, will just be fantastic for them and they'll be able to learn a hell of a lot about it. The one question I do want to throw to you is, we were amazed by how quickly um, fans from the different regions embraced their new teams. Yeah. Um, when we talk about the teams, some of the fans are going to be, oh no, but we've lost a few players because this one's gone, been released. So just give us maybe a bit of insight. Someone like an Alzari Joseph, for example, he's been released because the West Indies have a future tours program on the go. Just kind of a bit of insight into the releasing and, and some of the pre-signings. Yeah, absolutely. So, so teams were allowed to have up to six pre-signings, uh, two South Africans, four overseas. Um, and then obviously depending on that future tours program, I think that plays a big part, especially in the overseas players, as to so who, who you keep, who you retain. Um, and, and so that we've seen some turnover in some of the squads, well, less so in others. So uh, someone like Pretoria Capitals have gone for less pre-signings and hence they've got more, uh, more work to do today. Um, but left their options open. So, yeah, I think, uh, you know, 
di different strokes for different teams, but uh, yeah, I think I think that rookie will also feed into the greater strategy. Yeah. You know, there, there are a lot of ways you can go with it. I mean, you, uh, if you look at the age of 22 years or younger, uh, you can go for a player who's played two or three seasons of, of, of domestic cricket. You know, who's played 30 games, or you could go for someone 18 years old, you know, straight out of school there, and uh, you know, work with the guy and see and see where you go with that. So I think there's a bit of flexibility in that. Mm, or still in school, as the case yeah. is with with <laughs> Quena. Here are the rules um, for season two. Essentially, I think what you need to point out as we look through all of these is what is different in comparison to season number one. Yeah, I mean, the first thing is the salary cap's obviously gone up. You know, we, it's up by 5.1 million. Just gave the teams a little bit more flexibility. So that 39.1 million, that's uh, certainly. Uh, a hefty fee to, for teams to be able to use, to be able to trade players. We saw a few of those during the season, uh, during the off-season, should I say. Um, so there's a bit of flexibility there. Obviously, the rookie is, is, is completely new. Um, and, uh, and I think just probably a few tinkerings of, appro of approaches in terms of how teams will go about it. Mm. You know? so, uh, and that FTP has obviously affected availability on, on certain players. And in the, in the year in between, I mean, with all the, all the cricket being played these days, I mean, a lot of new players have come through and, uh, and, and so really, Guys who were unknown this time last year have, have, have emerged. Mm. Wild card. I like that. As I looked through there, it said wild seven excluding wild card. Tell everybody what that means. Yeah, I mean wild card is as the name suggests, it's a, it's an opportunity for the franchises to really go out there and uh, and be creative. It can be a South Left African. Field. It can be a South African, it can be a, an overseas. Uh, it doesn't fall within the salary cap. Um, it, it, yeah, it, it, they, they, they can announce it late, they can announce it early. We've had four teams already announce theirs. Mm. Two have still got that, that, that card up, up their sleeve. May well be waiting for today to see what they pick up before they go there. So, yeah, certainly. Okay, right. Well, looking forward to seeing who the wild cards are and kind of the makeup of each and every squad, each franchise. Right, time to get outside and Andre's out there with hope. Indeed, thank you very much, Pommy. We are here at the Blue Carpet with all the stars. And sitting next to me is a, a batsman from the Durban Super Giants, Matthew Britsky. Matthew, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. No, you experienced the Betway SA20 last season. Please let us know how has your experience been? It was unreal. It's probably the best month of cricket I've had in my whole life. Um, I just think the way we got treated, the crowds, everything, to be treated like that and, and play in front of crowds like that it was awesome. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing, Matthew. Something else that I want to know. Ooh, sounds like the bells are letting us go in almost. But quickly before I let you go, I want to know, as a batsman, what was the, the specific highlight for you for season one? Probably got two highlights. I think batting with Hanu Klaas and when he got that 100 in Centurion. And then my second one would probably be hitting the winning runs against the Mumbai Indians. So that was good. That sounds good. Well, those, those <laughs> must be very memorable mo uh, moments from your side. But we too have created a couple of memorable wickets moments from season one just for you. Have got him absolutely top class bowling. Done him, done him all in. Gone. What a beauty. Come back. A lot of character in this boy. Take that! Oh, yeah, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna show you flames, boy! Hey, you drive like Umama. That's cold! Like your bed in summer. Go oh, easy, boy, boy. I'm coming for you. Coming for me! Watch me pack this up! Two, two, two. Smooth! Where are you? <laughs> the Corona Cross. Cross boundaries.
Hello, Rainwell is calling. It's one plan for your home and phones with free calls and data every month. Get two free mobile lines, each with two free gigs, 60 free minutes, 100 free SMS every month. Switch to Rain One. Unlimited 5G home Wi-Fi plus free calls and data every month for two phones, all for only five five nine a month, and you can buy now and pay later. Uh -huh. To give you the best takes the best, the best hands, the best handling, the best care, and the best conditions. to bring you the best local fresh produce. The best of local, whatever it takes. For me, all of me. The new fragrance by Narciso Rodriguez. From stockbroking expertise to philanthropy advice, our wealth advisors connect your money decisions to every aspect of your life. We call it Connected Wealth. Oh, up, up and away. That's not even going to be on the roof. That's well over. It's into the trees. It's a tremendous shot. Oh, he's hit that beautifully. He's got underneath that, and he's hit that for a long, long six. Oh, you beauty! Under the roof of that old pavilion stand. Oh, and that's crunched. Wow, how's that first strike? Jeez, that's gone a long way. Oh, hello, that's a fantastic hit. Miles back. That is some hit. Oh, you talked about it, Brewery. It's in that direction. That's picked up. Has that gone all the way? Yeah, I think this is one of the biggest sixes that I've actually seen at the Wanderers. Tristan Stubbs sends this one into orbit. Down the track that time, and he said that very well. Hey, welcome back, welcome back, everybody. We're live to you from the Wonders Club and at SA20. Season number two as I'm begun. It begins with the auction. So effectively, we can say we're starting off. Ashwell Prince, Sean Pollock alongside. Guys, as we look back, you have to be shrewd, don't you, in terms of your acquisitions for your sides? Yeah, I think you do. I think they've got some good plans in place. A lot of teams have gone out front and said, listen, we're going to pre-sign certain individuals. But I think they've got a better understanding about what's required. It was all a bit of a novelty in that first season. You have a bit of a, a reassessment. You try and look at who was successful, who wasn't, how you can strengthen your side, who you're going to offload. So there's been a lot of changes, and you would expect it to be more calculated. It's not a massive auction. I think there will only be 21 players picked up today mm. compared to, I think, over 80 last time. But I think it's going to be strategic about who they go after. Mm. How you kind of sort out what you think of a player on paper and what he does in real life, the difficulty of that as we look at Durban Supergiant and, and what they have left. Yeah, I think it's, it's not the case of just getting a big name because he's in the auction and his name is there. It's about where he fits in to your 11 or your starting 11, if you wish, and what kind of role he plays at your home ground, at, the, at uh, away grounds, obviously certain home grounds. Uh, suits certain type of players. Uh, we saw at Power Royals, for instance, their spinners were really, really successful under their conditions. Uh, Joburg Super Kings there, well, they enjoy the ball coming on, so their batters will be looking to 
uh, for all their boards up there at the Wanderers. And, and generally in the high felt, that's the case. Um, fantastic with somebody like Mawin Ali coming in there. What an acquisition. Mm, yeah. I just think it's, it's going to be Joburg, Super Kings and Pretoria Capitals. I think those are the ones who are going to be doing most of the, the buying in this auction. Um, you know, they're the ones who've got lots of money. Durban Super Kings, I think they've only got two places available besides the rookie and they haven't got much of a purse. So, MR Cape Town have also got a decent purse uh, and it's going to be interesting to see. We might actually, actually see a lot of um, players come to the fore and not even have a bit of a battle between because people know exactly what they want at this stage to make their sides a bit stronger. Yeah, good that we, you know, see all these numbers and you're looking right hand side, purse remaining and that's what Sean's talking about in terms of who has a lot of money left. So, Pal Royals, Pretoria Capitals, Joburg Super Kings, MI Cape Town, they've got five, six, nine, eight and then Sunrise as Eastern Cape. Well, that means their side is done, doesn't it? Well, it's continuity. That's what that means to me. It's continuity. They've obviously the successful team from the first season. They want continuity. They've signed and sealed their guys. And maybe just one last piece to the jigsaw puzzle. Okay, what's important is, well, who's coming? Where are they coming? How are we doing this? Batters in set number one. Just kind of thrown some up there, um, Sean as you look through those. Yeah, you've got eight names, but the key is you don't know who's coming out first. Yeah. It's kind of drawn out of a hat, and then you have to decide. So you might be wanting one of those batters, but he might only come out eighth. We get keepers, Calvarena was released. Interesting uh, name, Robin Utapa. Yeah. I mean, whether he goes as a keeper, he can do the keeping job. Mm. Ruben Herman, I think he goes as, as one of the, the rookies. He might be picked up as well. So, um, yeah, some exciting options. I think all rounders, I mean, let's be honest, all rounders make and break teams. <laughs> He's going to go there sure, again. Yeah. Sure. He's going to go there again. <laughs> they make or break sides. So this is going to be the big section. This is where all the money is going to be spent on making sure that you've got that particular balance. Um, Colin de Grandome, he's, he's presented. That's someone new for us at the SA20 this year. Yeah, and a good player, good international player, New Zealand, and hit it a long way, bowl some mediums and swing it and so forth on South African tracks. Fast bowlers, this will be interesting. Uh, Romario Shepard is in there. He was here last time, and the kind of schedule, isn't it? That's that's yeah. the issue. These guys kind of having international commitments as well. well. He's had some fantastic success since he's been in, in South Africa and mm. with the West Indies, so he's been in some really good form. Yeah, look at the spin bowlers and Van Berg. Looking at him, senior guy, Imran Manak. Mm. Uh, Makila Dananjaya, mystery. You always want those in 2020 cricket. So Liam Alder, he's a rookie mm. as well. So does he get picked up first before the rookie section, or do we wait until at the back end? But um, yeah, exciting. Some players who can definitely have an impact in the spin department. What did they say last year? What did we say last year? We said, give him my Cape Town the trophy <laughs> on the back of <laughs> of of, um, of the auction. So it's not that, is it? I think they're all aware of that now. I mean, a lot of them, the owners, the coaches, mm. they've been around the block, around the world, and they know that they've got to find that cohesion within their teams. Mm. And it didn't happen initially for the Sunrisers, but sort of midway they got to go in, they got Rula van der Merve in the team. They had that game in Cape Town that they won from absolutely nowhere, mm. and that sort of turned things around for them. Mm. And they obviously are the defending champions, and they hope having done just about all their business, they can do it again. Let's get this on the roll to the commissioner, Graham Smith. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, um, to distinguished guests, to our teams, six franchises. It's fantastic to have you back in South Africa. We've spent all this time reminiscing about season one, and today opens season two. It's incredible to see the coaches, some of the players that uh, really took season one to life, and then, of course, those at home, the fans, who uh, came out in droves to support SA20 and really you know, brought it to life in season one. We're here for season two. And uh, it's been a lot of hard work to always get to this auction day. So I found myself at home uh, or at the hotel 
having a surreal moment really about the platform that was created for season one and thinking about the opportunity for those players today. An opportunity, a dream that can come true to be a part of one of these franchises, to bring your cricketing career to life and to set you up yourself up for something special. A legacy tournament that hopefully will, you know, really bring the best out of all the teams. We know the teams, the, comp the competition, the competitive nature of all of you and the players that will join you today. 15 players in the auction and the six rookies in the draft later today. So we wish everyone well. We uh, wish the teams well. We know how seriously you take today. And we cannot wait to see the squads at the end of season two auction. At the core, we will always be a cricket product and uh, we look forward to seeing that come to life tonight and knowing the competition that's going to be available. For season two, we have a, a new auctioneer making her debut, and I'd like to welcome her. She comes with a great amount of expertise, and I'd like to welcome Ariella Cooper. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, franchisees, global audience, and members in the studio. It is an absolute privilege. As you heard, my name is Ariella Cooper, and let's have some fun today. Let's continue the new era of SA Cricket, who's going to become a new household name, and will records be broken? Today's session is broken up into three parts. The first session, number one, comprises of 40 players, as we are aware of five specialist skills. Thereafter, we will have the express round after a break, followed by the rookie draft. Gentlemen, franchisees, to quote a previous franchisee previously, it is about adrenaline, auctions, and hammers. Let's have some fun today, and may you all be successful in your bidding. I ask you, when you do raise your bid, to please use your paddle. And when a representative of the league actually comes over for you to sign your nomination form as a successful bidder, please ensure that you also include the number and not just the name. It helps our system stay in order, so kindly adhere to that one. Gentlemen, as we kick off with our first session, set one, batters, we call to the table none other than actress, entrepreneur, radio personality, recently appearing in the critically acclaimed Shaka Ilembe, none other than Hope Mbele. A round of applause. Thank you. Hope will now draw a paddle with a number and a name. And this will be number one of nine, forming the set of specialist skills of batters. To commence the kickoff, number nine, Alec Athanes. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, coming from the West Indies, Alec Athanes, who's going to start me off at 175, 175,000 Rand. Do we have an opening bid of 175? Looking for an opening bid of 175,000. Do we have 175? Looking for 175. Any bids at 175? First name drawn at 175, any bids? Moving along, this will go to the unsold, non-allocated, thank you. Can you please draw the second one? None other than number one, Wayne Madsen, coming from England, vastly experienced middle order batter from Derbyshire in the UK. Gentlemen, opening up at 850,000 Rand. Do we have an opening bid of 850,000 Rand? 850 coming from Joburg Super Kings, 850. Do we have 900,000? 900, 900,000 we're looking for, 900,000. Sitting at 850,000 with Joburg Super Kings, do we have 900,000? Looking for 900,000? Sitting at 850,000 for the first. And the second, third and final, sold to Joburg Super Kings. Thank you very much. If we can give it to a representative, thank you very much. Pulling out the next. 
And we have number two, Yanaman Malan, last year selling for 2.7 million to Joburg Super Kings. Gentlemen, opening bid at 175,000 Rand. Do we have an opening bid at 175? 175 we're looking for. Do we have an opening bid at 175? Looking for 175. Do we see 175? Any opening bids at 175? Opening and closing at 175. Thank you. And moving along, number four. The next name drawn is number six, Brandon King. Brandon King coming in from the West Indies, age 26. Opening bid, 850,000 Rand. 850 we're looking for. Do we have an opening bid of 850? 850, this is set one of the batters at 850,000. Do we have an opening bid, 850? Looking for 850. Any advances? 850? Passing on 850, thank you very much. Number seven, Paul Sterling. Paul Sterling coming from Ireland. Gentlemen, opening bid 425,000 Rand. Do we have an opening bid of 425? At 425, we're looking for. Do we see 425? 425. Any advances on the opening bid at 425,000? 425 coming in from Pretoria Capitals. Thank you. At 425,000, we have. Do we see 450? 450, looking for 450, sitting with Pretoria Capitals at 425,000. Do we see a 450? Any further advances on 425, opening bid for the first and the second, third and final call, sold at 425 to Pretoria Capitals. Thank you. Nearing the end, we now have number eight, Tony DeZorzi. Gentlemen, opening up from South Africa, left-hand batter at 175,000 Rand. Do we have an opening bid at 175? Looking for an opening bid at 175, Tony DeZorzi, do we see 175? Looking for a bid, do we have any opening bids? At 175,000. At 175? This will be passed on and can be reconsidered in the express round. At 175, final call, passed. Thank you very much. If I'm correct, this might be the last or the second last. Number five, Marcus Ackerman. Marcus Ackerman, South Africa, left-hand batter. Gentlemen, 175, 175,000. Do you have an opening bid at 175? At 175, do we see a 175? 175, 175,000. No advances on 175, passed. Thank you very much. We have one left before we close the end of this set. And we have closing out number four, Cameron Delport. Cameron Delport, left-hand batter from South Africa, hard hitting at 175. Rand. Do we have an opening bid for the final of the set at 175,000? Any advances on 175, the final selection of the skill set batters in this particular round? Gentlemen, for the first and the second, pass. This will be allocated to the express round. I would like to thank you very much, Hope. And we will now move on to the second set. Thank you. <laughs> Moving into Wicked Keepers, set number two. None other than former professional rugby with the Eastern Province Kings and super sport content creator. Put your hands together for Cook Sonkozi. Cooks will be our host to pull out the next seven names that comprise of this particular set. Gentlemen, are we ready? 
And the first name is none other than, okay, this is set number two with no number. Bear with me, sorry about that. And we have Calvarain, which is number 10. Calvarain, Calvarena, coming from South Africa, ladies and, well, gentlemen in this particular case, opening at 175,000, seal number 10, Calvarena, Opening bid at 175,000. Do we have an opening bid at 175? At 175, I'm looking for 175. 175, Calvarena. Any advances on 175? Opening, closing. We have a coming in at Pretoria Capitals at 175, at 175,000. Do we have 200? Looking for 200, sitting with Pretoria Capitals on my right hand side. Do we have a 200? Calvarena sitting with Pretoria Capitals at 175,000, opening bid number. Any further advances for the first, second, third and final call, sold to Pretoria Capitals. Calvarena, thank you very much. And we have number 11, Chris Benjamin. Chris Benjamin coming from England. Opening bid, 175,000 at 175. Do we have 175 for Chris Benjamin? Opening bid, 175. 175 coming in from MI Cape Town at 175. Do we have 200? 200 I'm looking for. Sitting in the middle at MI Cape Town, 175. Do we have a 200? Looking for 200? At 175. For the first, at 175 for the second, third and final, MI Cape Town at 175, confirmed, thank you. The next one, number 12, we seem to be working in an order. Thank you, thank you. Okay, none other than Lorcan Tucker. Gentlemen, Lorcan Tucker coming from Ireland, the Irish Gloveman, at 175,000. Do we have an opening bid? At 175,000 rand. Looking for an opening bid? At 175. Do we have 175? Looking for a bid? At 175, we shall pass. Any advances? Passing. Thank you very much. And the next number. We have coming in as a late addition, Tom Wurz, left hand batter and wicket keeper. Tom Wurz, number 98, opening bid 175. At 175,000, do we have 175,000 for Tom Wurz? Tom Wurz, 175, looking for 175. Do we have a 175? We shall pass on Tom Wurz at 175 and he shall be allocated to the express round. Thank you. Three left to go of this particular set. And we have number 15, Robin Utapa from India. Thank you very much. Vast experience in the IPL at 850,000 Rand. Robin Utapa. 850,000, looking for an opening bid at 850,000. Gentlemen, do we see an opening bid at 850,000 Rand? 850, any advances? Passed, Robin Utapa, thank you. Coming in for the final two. And we are at number 14, Connor Esterhazen, coming from South Africa, also a rookie at 175,000 Rand. Do we see a 175? Looking for 175? Do we have a 175? At 175, I'm looking for? Do we see 175? Passed. Thank you very much. Coming into the final name, we have. I think I can guess this one. <laughs> Number 13, and we have Ruben Herman from South Africa, young left-handed, wicket keeper batter, 175,000 opening bid. Do we have a 175? Looking for 175? Do we see a 175? The final of the wicket keepers at 175. Any bids? 175? Pass. Thank you very much. 
I would like to thank you for your excellent contribution. Thank you very much. A round of applause. Guksongkozi. We now move to the all-rounder, set number three, with super sport content creator on various shows, appearing regularly in both Social Corner and Super Picks. Ladies, gentlemen, global audience, put your hands together for none other than Andre Chizubu. This particular set of all-rounders comprises of a total of eight names. Last year, Tristan Stubbs, 9.2 million. Will we see anything that interesting this evening? No, starting off at number 20, George Garton. Gentlemen, George Garton coming in from England. 175 I'm looking for. Do we have a 175? At 175 I'm looking for, do we see a 175? 175,000. Any advances? Do we see 175? At 175 we're looking for? For George Garton. Any bids? 175. We shall pass on George Garton. 175, final call. Pass. Thank you very much. And coming up, number 22, Matthew Boast. Gentlemen, we have number 22 coming from South Africa, young fast bowling all-rounder from the Titans at 175,000, also in the rookie draft at 175,000. Do we have an opening bid? Looking for 175. Do we see 175? At 175, I'm looking for 175. At 175, I'm looking for, do we see a 175, ladies, gentlemen, gentlemen in this particular case? 175 franchisees? We have coming in from Durban Supergiants at 175. On my left, do we see 200? 200 I'm looking for. That could almost cost you money there. <laughs> 175 sitting with Durban's Supergiants. Looking for 200? 200 coming in from Joburg Super Kings. It was the nuts. Do Joburg Super Kings, 200. Do we have a 225? 225 we have Durban Supergiants. Back at you, Joburg Super Kings. 250 we have. Looking at you for 275. Do we see 275 Durban Supergiants? Back at Joburg Super Kings, do we see we have a 300? 300,000 sitting with Joburg Super Kings. We have a 325 back at Durban Supergiants. Back at 325 we're looking for. 325 we have Joburg Super Kings. Do we have a 350? 350 coming in again from Durban Supergiants. Looking back at 375. 375 we have Joburg Super Kings. Back to 400. 400, 425, 450. Do we see a 475 sitting? 475 we have. 500 going into the next increment. Sitting with Durban Supergiants is 500,000. Do we see a 550? 550 we have. 600 we're looking for. At 550,000, sitting with Joburg Super Kings. Are you sure? At 550,000, sitting with Joburg Super Kings for the first. And the second? New better coming in at 600. 600 Pretoria Capitals. On my right at 600. Back at you at 650. Do we see a 650 Joburg Super Kings? 600 sitting with Pretoria Capitals. 650 we have. Do we see a 700? 700 we have. Do we see a 750? Feel free to come back in. Do we have 750 sitting here at 700,000 with Pretoria Capitals? At 700,000? Do we see a 750? 750 coming in from Joburg Super Kings. Back at 800. Do we see an 800? For Matthew Boast, 800 coming in from Pretoria Capitals. Do we see an 850 on my left-hand side? Sitting at 800 with Pretoria, 850 we have. Back at you at 900. 900 we have. To my left, looking at you for 950. We have 900,000 for Matthew Boast, sitting with Pretoria Capitals. Do we see a 950? 950 coming in. Do we, see, we have one million sitting with Pretoria Capitals. One million rand sitting with Pretoria Capitals. Do we see a 1.1? 1, 1. 1. Back at you at 1.2. 1.2. 1.3. 1.4. 1.5. 1.6. 1. 
1.3 we have sitting with Joburg Super Kings. 1.4 Pretoria Capitals. Sitting with Pretoria Capitals at 1.4 million. Do we have a 1.5? Are you sure? Sitting at 1.4 with Pretoria Capitals for the first. And the second? Third and five. We have sitting at 1.5. Joburg Super Kings at 1.5. 1 1.6 with Pretoria Capitals. Do we see a 1.7? Are you sure? 1.6 million at Pretoria Capitals for the first and the second. Third and final, sold for 1.6 million to Pretoria Capitals. A round of applause. And we are moving on to number 126, Matt Critchley. Is that correct? Yes, the Matt Critchley, 136, coming in from England. 425,000 Rand, looking for an opening bid of 425. Yes, 126. 126, we have Matt Critchley from England at 425,000 Rand. Do we have an opening bid at 425,000? 425,000? Any opening bids at 425? Pass on this one. Thank you very much. Next number, 23. Curtis Kempfer. Curtis Kempfer, number 23. Coming in from Ireland, the Irish all-rounder. Opening bid, 175. 175,000. Do we have 175? 175,000 for Curtis Kempfer. Looking for 175,000? Pass. Thank you very much. The next number, number 17, Diane Khalim. Diane Khalim from South Africa, the all rounder. 175, I'm looking for 175, we have coming in from MI Cape Town. Sorry, my absolute Paul Royals, my apologies. Paul Royals, 175. 175 we have, we have one, 200 from Joburg Supergiants, 200,000. 225 we have from Paul Royals, 250 we have from Joburg Super Kings. Do we have a 275? 275,000 we have coming in from Paul Royals, 300. 300s we have from Joburg Super Kings. Back at you at 325, 325 Paul Royals. Looking for, we have 350 coming in from Joburg Super Kings. 375 looking at Paul Royals. 375 we have Paul Royals. 400 Joburg Super Kings. 425 looking at Paul Royals. 425 we have from Paul Royals. 450 we have from Joburg Super Kings. Looking at you for 475. 475,000 we have over there. College double bit tempting. 475 back at you at 500. That's with Paul Royals. 500,000 with Joburg Super Kings. Do we have a 550 new increment at 550,000? Paul Royals back at you at 600,000. Sitting with Paul Royals at five. At, sorry, my apologies. We now have six, yes, we now have 600,000 sitting with Joburg Super Kings at 600,000. Looking for 650. 650,000 Paul Royals, 700,000, 700,000 Joburg Super Kings, 750. 750,000 coming in from Paul Royals, looking 800,000 Joburg Super Kings. Sitting at 800,000 with Joburg Super Kings, do we have 850 coming in Paul Royals, looking 900,000 Joburg Super Kings, do we see a 950? 900,000 sitting with Joburg Super Kings. Do we have a 950? We have a 950. 950,000 and a million coming in from Joburg Super Kings. At 1 million Rand from Joburg Super Kings, do we have a 1.1? Looking at Paul Royals. 1.1 we have from Paul Royals. Looking at 1.2 we have from Joburg Super Kings. 1.3 you're looking for. Sitting at 1.2 with Joburg Super Kings. Are you sure? We are sitting at 1.1 with Joburg Super Kings. 1.2, my apologies. 1.2 with Joburg Super Kings for the first. 1.2 for the second. With pleasure. 
We've just had a request for a consultation. Just two seconds, not a problem. Are you sure? Coming in at 1.3 from Paul Royals. Paul Royals is coming back in. 1.4 with Joburg Super Kings. 1.4 with Joburg Super Kings for Diane Khalim. 1.4. Sitting with Joburg Super Kings at 1.4. Do we have a 1.5? Paul Royals sitting at 1.4 with Joburg Super Kings. 1.5 we have from Paul Royals. Back at Joburg Super Kings. 1.6 coming in. I have 1.6 million with Joburg Super Kings. Looking for 1.7. Do we have a 1.7? Are you sure? At 1.6 million with Joburg Super Kings for the first. And the second. Third and final call, Joburg Super Kings, 1.6 million, congratulations. Coming into the last two, and we have Jamika Karunaratne coming in at number 24, Sri Lankan all-rounder, 425,000. Jamika Karunaratne, we have at 425,000 Rand. Do we have an opening bid at 425? Looking for 425. Opening bids at 425,000. Passed at 425,000. Thank you very much. Second last, number 18, Bayers Swanepoel. Bayers Swanepoel, South African, all-rounder, 175,000. Looking for an opening bid of 175. 175,000. Do we have an opening bid at 175? Any advances? 175? Pass. Thank you very much. As we come to the final of this lot, Number 21, we have Colin de Grandholm. Colin de Grandholm, number 21, coming in from New Zealand, 850,000 Rand opening bid. Looking for an 850,000. Do we have 850? 850? Any opening bids at the base reserve price of 850,000? This is the final of the set number three of all rounders. Pass. Thank you very much. I would like to thank you, Andre, for your excellent contribution. Thank you. We now move to the second last set of specialized skills, set number four of fast bowlers. I would like to call up none other than model, entrepreneur, and content creator Nkobile Mahlambi. In this set, we have eight names in total, and who shall be the first? Pulling out, we have number 26, Johan van Dijk. Number 26, Johan van Dijk from South Africa, the quick seam bowler from the Northern Cape, 175,000 Rand. Do we have an opening bid at 175? Looking for an opening bid of 175. Do we have 175? Any advances? Pa, is that a, was that a bit? Forgive us for two seconds. Do we have an opening bid? 175,000 for Johan van Dijk. Yes, no? For the first and the second, pass. Thank you very much. The next name, number 31, 
Tsepo Moreki, number 31, Tsepo Moreki, South African, recently selected for South African A, 175,000. Looking for 175,000. Do we have 175, 175,000? Tsepo Moreki. Any advances? Pass. Thank you very much. The next name, number 27, Romario Shepherd. Number 27, Romario Shepherd from the West Indies. Gentlemen, open me up at 850,000 Rand. Romario Shepherd, 850,000. Do we have an opening bid at 850,000? Do we see an 850? Looking for 850? No advances? I will take that 850, thank you very much, from Joburg Supergiants. 850,000 with Joburg Supergiants. Do we have a 900? Looking for 900,000, sitting on my left at 850,000 with Joburg Supergiants. 850,000. Any further advances from the base price? Sitting with Joburg Supergiants, 850,000 for the first and the second. Third and final call. Sold to the Joburg Super Giants. Thank you very much. My apologies, Joburg Super Kings. That was a slip of the tongue by me. Apologies. We now come to number 28, John Turner. Number 28, John Turner from England at 425,000. Do we have an opening bid? We have 425,000 from Paul Royals. 425, looking for 450. Do we have a 450? Sitting at 425,000 with Paul Royals. 425, do we have a 450? 450. 450,000. At 425,000 with Paul Royals for the first. Any further advances? And the second. At 425,000, sold to Paul Royals. Thank you very much. Number 30, Freddie Klaassen. Number 30, Freddie Klaassen from the Netherlands. Left-hand fast bowler, 425,000 rand. Do we have an opening bid of 425,000 for Freddie Klaassen? Looking for an opening bid of 425,000? Freddie Klaassen, 425,000, opening reserve price. Any advances? Passed, thank you very much. Number 29, Josh Tung. Number 29 from England, Josh Tung, recently played in the Ashes at 850,000 Rand. Looking for an opening bid of 850,000. Do we have 850,000? Any advances on opening bid of 850,000? Pass. Thank you very much. The next number. 32, Luto Sipamla. Luto Sipamla. Gentlemen, 175,000 at 175. Do we have an opening bid at 175? Looking for an opening bid at 175,000 for Luto Sipamla. 175, we're looking for. Any opening bids? Pass. Thank you very much. Coming into the last name. And none other than number 25, Darren Dupavlon. Darren Dupavlon, South Africa, 175 we're looking for. Do we have 175,000 opening bid for Darren Dupavlon? At 175,000 we're looking for. Do we have 175? 175, we have 175 from Durban Supergiants. Durban Supergiants on my left at 175,000. Do we see 200? Looking for 200 at 175 with Durban Supergiants. 175, opening bid for the first. Any further advances? At 175,000 Rand for Darren Dupavlon to Durban Supergiants. Coming in now at 200,000 from Pretoria Capitals. 200, 
May we look back at you at 225. We have 225 from Durban Supergiants. Back at you at 250. 250 we have from Pretoria Capitals. 275 from Durban Supergiants. Back at you at 300. Do we see 300,000 coming in? Yes, we do from Pretoria Capitals. Back, 325 from Durban Supergiants. 350. 350,000 Pretoria Capitals. 375 Durban Supergiants. Looking back at you at 400,000. 400,000 Pretoria Capitals. Looking at 425, thank you, confirmed from Durban Supergiants. 450, we have from Pretoria Capitals. 475, Durban Supergiants. 500, 500,000 Pretoria Capitals, new increment. 550, Durban Supergiants. 600, 600,000 Pretoria Capitals. 650, 600,000 with Pretoria Capitals. Looking at Durban Supergiants, do we see 650? Are you sure? At 600,000 Rand, sitting with Pretoria Capitals on my right hand side for the first, and the second, third, and final call, 600,000 sold and confirmed to Pretoria Capitals. Congratulations. Nkubile, thank you very much. We now come to the final set of the specialist skills. Super sport content creator and winner at the DSTV annual awards for sports fan award. None other than Lemmy Loco. This set comprises of eight names. Gentlemen, are we ready? The first name pulled out of the final set is none other than number 40, Akila Dhananjaya. Gentlemen, number 40, Akila Dhananjaya from Sri Lanka, opening bid, 175,000 Rand. Do we have an opening bid of 175? Looking for an opening bid of 175, Akila Dananjaya, do we have 175? Any advances? Pass, thank you. The next name is number 39. We have Imran Manak. Imran Manak from South Africa, right arm of spinner at 175. Do we have 175,000 opening bid? Looking for 175? Any opening bids? Pass, thank you very much. And we have number 34, Liam Alder. Liam Alder, number 34, left hand and rookie. 175 we are looking for. Do we have 175,000? We're looking for 175,000 Rand. Gentlemen, do we have an opening bid for num player number 36? Do we have 34, apologies, 34, Liam Alder, rookie, left-hand spin bowler at 175? Yep. Okay, no, sorry. Passed, thank you very much. The next name we have is number 38, Sean Von Berg. Number 38, Sean Von Berg from South Africa. 175 I'm looking for. 175, do we have a 175? Looking for an opening bid of 175,000 Rand. Any advances? Pass, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And we have number 36. And number 36 we have Isarulak Navid from Afghanistan. 425,000 is the opening bid. 425,000. Do we have 425? Looking for 425? Any opening bids at 425,000? Pass. Thank you very much. Coming down to the close end, number 37, Caleb Seleka. Number 37, Caleb Seleka from South Africa, wrist spinner, 175. We have 175 from Sunrisers, Eastern Cape, at 175. 175, we're looking for 200,000. Do we have 
at 200,000. 175 in the middle with Sunrise's Eastern Cape, looking for 200,000. Sitting at the opening bid price of 175, do we have any further advances? At 175,000 with Sunrise's Eastern Cape for the first. Gentlemen, and the second. Third and final call, sold to Sunrise's Eastern Cape at 175,000 Rand. Thank you very much. Coming down to the last two of the set. And we are pulling out number 35, Junaid Daywood. Junaid Daywood from South Africa, leg spinner, 175. We are looking for an opening bid at 175,000 Rand. Do we have an opening bid at 175,000? Looking for 175? Do we have a bid at 175? For the first, second, 175,000 Rand. Do we have any advances? Pass. Thank you very much. As we come to the last name of the spin bowler, set number five, none other than number 33, Nathan Soto. Nathan Soto from England, 425,000 Rand. I'm looking for. Do we have 425? Looking for an opening bid at 425,000. At 425? No bids. 425. This will close out set number five of the spin bowlers. Pass. Thank you very much. Lemmy, thank you very much. <laughs> Gentlemen, we will now end the session. Thank you very much. You will have a 20-minute break. I ask, if possible, to please try and be seated in 10 minutes. But please also use this time to collate your short list of your expression of interest. One of the representatives from the league will come and collect it from you. And that will take us into our next round of the express session. Thank you very much. Yep, there we go. That was actually quicker than we expected. We thought there'd be quite a few more uh, bidding wars, you know, with the players. But I guess what it shows you, and we were talking about this earlier, guys, that teams know what they want, and essentially they have their teams and they're just kind of filling in little gaps. They're filling in, but they, they also feel as if they, they're sort of kind of feeling if others are interested in their guys which they will obviously nominate in the next section uh, and then try and get them there and maybe just trying to assist whether there's interest in the same names mm. yeah we, we said that a lot of them are going to be clear about what they want to do so they might not be much arguing i think you would want a little bit of interest because that means that you're getting a gun player because <laughs> if no one else is interested you'd be a little bit concerned but what did i tell you mm. all rounders of course they <laughs> went for the most amount of money. Come on, guys. Okay, you fair enough. Uh, yeah, no argument there. Let's have a look at the list of um, who has been sold. And there were 10 sales, 10 bids, more than 10 bids, actually. Successful bids is what I should say. Diane Khalim, youngster from the Titans. He's not so much a youngster anymore, actually, is he? Yeah, not so much a youngster anymore. He's coming into his own now as a, as a cricketer. Uh, playing for the Titans and some useful contributions across formats really for mm. the Titans. Um, he was at the crease last year actually for the Titans when they won the T20 domestic competition. Mm. So a fantastic outing for him last year in the domestic competition. So he's really coming into his own as a cricketer. If you're Matthew Boast and you're, what is he, 20 years old? And in at 175, also eligible for the rookie and then you get 1.6 million. This is why we say it changes lives, this story. Yeah, I think Matthew will be able to go to Varsity and boast about how the fact he got <laughs> 1.6 million. Um, but he must be excited. Both those guys must be hell of excited. You know, all rounders, there's also more of a chance that you get a game or two. You know, sometimes as a squad member, if you're an all rounder, you're always looking for the balance of a side. On today, we'll give a guy who can bowl us an over or two and maybe give it a whack down the bottom of the order. So uh, Durban Super Giants, they haven't, they've put a few bids in, but yeah. uh, every time they've got up near 500, 600,000, 
someone's come in and said, no, no, we'll take him off you. And, that, and I, sup I suppose what's important to point out to all of you as you watch this is the fact that right at the bottom right hand side there, purse remaining 1.68. And so it's quite easy for those that have a whole lot more money to kind of blow you out of, of the water, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. They could just they could just keep going. And um, I've seen one or two expressions on the faces from the teams with less in the budget, sort of uh, just just knowing that no, we can't compete with them. But what you would say, they're only allowed to get one player. So they've got 17, they've got to get one other player and then they've got to get a, a rookie. So why wouldn't they have spent 1.5? On the player they want. On the player they want. Yeah, and the question I guess they, they've is been three times they've been putting their hand up saying we keen. Like I think Post was one of them, and then they bailed at about five hundred, six hundred thousand. Especially because the the rookie price is seventy five thousand. Mm. So you, that's all you have to save, as it were, mm. and then you can use the rest. And the wild card doesn't affect your purse. Joburg Super Kings they have two point eight uh, million remaining. They've used um, their money quite nicely. They've, they've been in and done some business. Yeah, they have done. Halim and Romario Shepard, obviously bolstering that all-rounders department that uh, Sean Pollock keeps harping on about. Mm -hmm. uh, and they will bring good value to the team. I mean, they can use a new ball. Romario has done that. And a big hitter towards the end of an innings. And similarly, Dayan Halim can do a similar type of job. So. Uh, some nice acquisitions there for, just, for Joburg just, Super Kings. Just to go into the description, Wayne Madsen played hockey for South Africa, mm. went to the Olympics for South Africa mm. as a hockey player, and then went and go played cricket overseas. 37, 39 years old. Yeah, it was. So he'll be really happy about his his gig. Yeah, it was. Um, Quentin de Kock was saying a little top up at the end because of these um, franchise oh, the tournaments. There you go. Oh. There's a little top up Indeed. for Wayne Madsen. 4.88 million is what remains in the purse of. MI Cape Town, who have a decent squad already um, and are essentially having to make sure that they do good business for the balance of the side. Yeah, they only gone for uh, Benjamin in that first part of the draft. Uh, but Liam Livingston will be like a new signing, yes. obviously injured last season, and he was a big miss for them. So Liam Livingston coming back. He will feel like a, a new acquisition. Yeah, Tom, Tom Banton, Tom Banton as well. As well. Yeah. So Banton they've, as well. They've yeah. got, I think they missed at the top of the door. They felt like it was a bit of a hit and miss yeah. for MR last year. Yeah. So maybe trying to solidify things. That's not the squad we'd have picked to finish last. No. You know, and, and they did. So despite their superstars. Right, Pearl Royals, 8.44 million. They've still got quite a bit. 17 overseas, four. Yeah, they. Not a whole lot of business to do still, but a lot of money left. Yeah, still quite a bit of money left. They missed Obed McCoy last season, mm. uh, injured. Obviously, uh, from there, they didn't really have a new ball bowler. So he, him being fit and coming back into that squad is going to be a massive one. Business done by these guys, mm. and yet still 6.94. I thought it was a steal. Kyle Verena, 175,000. Remember Phil Salt? I think they let Phil Salt go, who did so well at the top of the order. And um, Verena can do similar things as he's shown just recently. He has shown recently. He started off the season with 100 of 60 balls the other day. And you will, you will be happy that he had a, a Weinberg old boy at the table in Jacques Callas bidding for the Weinberg boy. <laughs> <laughs> right. 1.62 million is what the champions, the defending champions, the Sunrisers Eastern Cape have left. They've got Caleb Seleka. The youngster, they've got him, and no doubt there's excitement galore as he joins the champion side. Right. We're relaxed in here. I wonder what it's like outside. <laughs> Lemmy's out there. Lemmy, who have you got? Look, uh, before I even cross over to who I've got, it's been an interesting round of bidding. But somebody who's no stranger to the pressure, no stranger to the lights, and of course the competition. I'm here with Corbin Bosch. Corbin, how are you, brother? Yeah, it is fantastic. I can just imagine how the, the fans and everyone is at home, especially the players. Yeah. I'm getting nervous just sitting there for the <laughs> players itself, but I'm just thrilled to be here. Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of excitement and a lot of curiosity about your moves and of course playing with your brother. How's that been? What are your thoughts on that? I mean, I think my mom firstly will be the, the happiest of the lot now. She doesn't <laughs> have to have a divided household, but yeah. I'm 
ecstatic that I get to play with Ethan for the very first time in my entire career. I've only ever played against him, and for once he won't get me out for a change, so I'm super happy about that. I'm, I'm very excited about my move to Pretoria. Now, a little birdie told me that your nickname is Thor. <laughs> now, I don't know if it's because your bat is as strong as Thor's <laughs> hammer, or you're just a fan. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, if anyone knows me, I'm a big Marvel fan, and last year when I went to the Caribbean, I thought, okay, cool, I'm going to do a celebration, and I like to think about Thunderbolt, so I think that's where Thor initially came from, and yeah. I've kind of run with it. I enjoy it. As I said, he's my favorite Marvel character. Blonde hair, blue eyes. I mean, what, what more could you want? Now, before I even let you go, what are your thoughts on the new team, like the squad? Are you excited to be part of the team? Um, I'm extremely excited. I think we've got a very dynamic team, very exciting, and we're going to play an auxiliary ex uh, exhilarating brand of cricket. Yeah. So I'm just super pr privileged to be a part of such a fantastic franchise and hopefully we can do one better this year and, and take the trophy home. Fantastic. That's Corbin Thor Bosch, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a little bit something exciting for you as well as we head over to the best moment, the Betway Catch a Million. Grand Vitara, starting from only 339.900. T's and C's apply. conditions to bring you the best local fresh produce the best of local whatever it takes there's a saying if you don't look back at your own car after you park it you own the wrong car Dumor never had this problem wherever he went it was like having 50 car guards watch his car beauty with a beast under the bonnet. But these days, he doesn't drive as much, which means not so many eyes get to see this beauty, unless you count the cat. If you drive less than 15,000 kilometers a year, you can save up to 20% on your premium. Fine strike, we need more of that. I think we've got a catch. That's a second tier, a third tier. 
And he's just snaffled it. It was the most beautiful strike. And a... Oh! It's an even better catch! The big man in Durban thought he had a million bucks. It's now been half. And here it comes. <laughs> Somebody! Nah, nobody! They say he has. They say he has. Everyone's applauding. Nah, that's straight in. That's straight in. Oh, shot. That's a beauty of a shot. World Cup shirt. He's got the celebration to go with. He hasn't let go of the ball yet. Jacks, Jacks again. He's gone big. He's gone huge. There's another catch. Summaries. You know, Piaté. Again, there's no spillage. Mark inside. He's had enough of him. He's going to go after it. Has he middled it? Yes, he has. And the catch taken. Yes! Yeah! It's grabbed. We've got our sixth catch. He's into the two million competition. He likes playing his strokes. And that is a beauty. Oh, my goodness gracious me. Three balls in this game. And we have a man who is going to share the that way two million rand. There's another one flicked on its way, and this time it's going to go the whole way. Oh, and taken in the crowd. That's a brilliant catch. He had to deal with the advertising boards. Got his hand in front of himself. And he should be celebrating. That was fantastic. Oh, God, oh what, what a brilliant. This time over. It's taken again! Can you believe that? This place is prolific when it comes to the Bitway Catch 2 Million! Welcome back everybody. Look in the background. That's uh, the Wanderers. And there's a game on there. The lights are on. Some local action going on. And I tell you what, there's a whole lot of action over here in the foreground. That's where we are at the Wanderers Club with this SA20 auction for season number two. Actually, can't go past those catches. The Betway catch a million became the Betway catch two million because some grounds were too good at catch. <laughs> Others not so, but uh, some were particularly good. It's one reason, well, million reasons to turn up and support. Yeah, it is. It's a brilliant reason to get in support and we'll wait to see with the development by the time this next edition starts. You know, it might be three. It, it be might four. be three. We yeah. never know. Pretoria won. Believable. Uh, Cape Town? Well, you'll wait to see if Cape Town and Paul have improved their catching. Yeah. <laughs> I think they needed to maybe get more bouncy surfaces so the ball goes into the crowd a little yeah, bit absolutely. more. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Okay. On to the next. Yeah. It's about the business of the day. It's the auction and what's going on. This is what's remaining in terms of the purse and as we look on the right hand side there guys it's significant the fact that these teams have to you know purchase one two players and they've got huge amounts of money yeah the most important thing is look at the players so 17 17 16 and then the rest of them 17 so they can only buy one more player with that amount and then the rest of it comes for a rookie so basically you're looking at at someone for example the power royals have got eight million to buy one player. So if there's anyone they really need, there might be a bit of a betting war with maybe Momba or Pretoria Capitals. Mm. Yeah, and I guess also what's to, to impress upon everybody is that in this express auction, there have to be expressions of interest from the various franchises. Now, there's a critical element in that. You might express interest and you put Sean Pollock in the hat, but then when Sean Pollock's name comes up, others go, hold on, I think I might like him, actually. <laughs> so they bid against you, so you don't necessarily get who you put in there. No, you don't necessarily get your man. I mean, you put him forward, but there's no guarantee that you're going to get him. Mm. And you expect bigger numbers to come out now mm. in terms of the bids because these are the guys that they said they were interested in. Mm. The other thing that we add is that some of the names that have already been mentioned will return. Uh, and some of the names that we haven't seen yet will, come will now up. all of a sudden be showing some interest and they'll come to the top of the pops and to the list. So it'll be very interesting. They've, they've got one selection. It's kind of the cherry on the top. How do we balance up our squad besides the um, MR Cape Town? They've got two. How do we balance things up? How do we finish things off? Who's that one person we need? Mm, yeah, the one thing they don't have to tell us yet, they've got time, 
is the wild card. And the wild card is not affected by the purse. Um, I don't know, actually, if kind of off the books there is a maximum they can pay for the wild card. Um, it, it's just said that, nope, you go and purchase your wild card, no problems. It can be anyone and you can kind of go for whoever you want. But there's only two teams. Two mm -hmm. teams have left. So four of them have already picked their wild cards. So who are we? Archer, Nicholas Puran. Mm. Um, so there's only two teams. And I think Overton. it's Overton's Craig there. Overton. MR Cape Town? No, they've got Archer. It's, ja it's Johannesburg Super Archer. Kings and uh, Pretoria Capitals. We haven't, they've got until the 30th of December to announce that. So they can also balance things up with that guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the price. I'm on, you know, how much can they cost? <laughs> cost absolutely anything. Nicholas Poudin, well, you would like to know how much he costs. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we would like to know. I mean, <laughs> and, and let's, you know, whilst we're at it, we can talk about the other um, franchise tournaments around the world and the fact that they work in US dollars and therefore the purses are going to be that much bigger wherever else. So these franchises will be aware of the kinds of monies that these players go for so it might well be that also, kind of scenario also the wild card sometimes it might be someone who presents himself so someone could retire maybe he doesn't get picked by the west indies for a particular tour and then all of a sudden he's available and there's a wild card i mean you think of in the rpl for example sometimes people were injured and they had to be replaced there yeah. was one example of chris gale who wasn't available and then had a fallout with the west indies made himself available but had to come in as a replacement so sat there waiting for someone to get injured and someone got him, and I think he got 190 and 100 in the space of three games. So was, was that's that the impact. Was it Kolkata or was that, yeah, I think it was called? RCB. I think was that was RCB? when he went to the RCB. Yeah, mm. yeah I, th I think there'll be lots of eyes on the Future Tours program and keeping a close look on that and just seeing where people become available, particularly for the wild card selection. Yeah, and, and there was already, I mean, I, I think it's something I should point out as well. We spoke about this just briefly at the beginning to say that um, the SA20 sort of organization was quite good in, in terms of, of signing off contracts mm. initially because some signed sort of two plus one contracts and those would be local players because they must be available, they will be available for the tournament. But there's some international players, like Zari Joseph, Romario Shepard, all the West Indian players who only signed one year contracts because of that future tours program. And it's something that you kind of have to look at. Also, mm. throw in, who was it, Matthew Wade. Australians turned up at the back end as replacements to come into. After, so, after they were knocked out. Yes, yeah. out of the, knocked big out bash, of the big, big bash. bash yeah. so. The other point is to remember is someone like a Pretoria Capitals. Um, so they released the two. So it was Mendes and Salt. Both wicket keepers. So it was always in the straw. They were going to try and get themselves a wicket keeper. So now they've got Carl Varena, but do they want to play him? And they've still got the opportunity to go for a wild card. So once everything's dust is settled, they can maybe say to themselves, well, actually, we're looking for a really explosive batter who can also keep. And then they fill up their squad that way. So they've actually got the luxury, the two sides that haven't picked their wild cards as yet, mm -hmm. as also balancing things up with those individuals. Yeah, let's shift to the coaching side of things. And then I'm looking at all those tables and Number one, I'm looking Jacques Callas over there, Manjama Mashimbi, um, Robin Peterson, Dale Stain, um, Albie Morkel, who's at the Johnny Rhodes. Johnny Rhodes over there. The, the importance of that local knowledge and kind of combining how you sort of set up the team that way. Who's going to play, who's not? And we see in all the other franchise tournaments, essentially it's got to be your local players that are very good in order to kind of stick with the standard of your overseas players. Yeah, I think the, the local coaches within all of the squads, they fulfill that particular role. Um, there's some guys that's more on the ground, Manla Mashamba is more on the ground than perhaps a, a John T. Rhodes. Um, there's also um, Park here at um, Abrams at Sunrise. So, they only need one player. They haven't spent, they only got 1.6 million left. Mm. And they might be budgeting all of that just on one particular player because they know exactly where they um, want to go in terms of a local player. So those guys play a massive role. Mm. What, what happens in tournaments like this when guys, you know, get made as it were? And I'm thinking Donovan Ferreira, many said, oh, domestically, this guy can whack it. And then he shows it somewhere down the line now he's played for south africa and things kind of move along quite quickly so on the importance of mm. tournaments such as these 
for things like that? Yeah, I think we're biased here, aren't we? I mean, we would love for all our young South Africans to have an unbelievable tournament. So mm. they get selected, they get to earn some good money, but they also get to spend a lot of time with some senior players, senior coaches. And then when they are given that opportunity, like we saw with Previs, uh, Stubbs, Ferreira, to really kick on. And we hope that in this version, those guys, they each had little cameos, one or two performances, but we'd like them to rock star themselves in the next edition so that when they get picked yeah. back for South Africa, that they just go as a catalyst moment where they go on in leaps and bounds. And that's what the youngsters, you know, you're obviously going to get some that are picked up here. They're just going to be squad members. You yeah. know, they might not even get a gig at yeah. any stage, but they'll have learned and hopefully take that back to the domestic game. He goes with bias in terms of us and our players. I think sometimes we're a little bit conservative about our players. I think we have some fantastic talent that we're not sure whether we should be pushing their names on the world stage, but they go onto the world stage and they show us what they can do. You know, mm. people like Marco Janssen in the last few years, Brevis, yes, not a great campaign locally with Mumbai, uh, Cape Town, but went to the Mumbai, New York and played some uh, mature innings and some very important innings towards the end of the competition. And sometimes we a little conservative. I think we can push him a bit more. <laughs> yeah, yeah go, let it out. <laughs> you can. And oh, I suppose yeah. that's why there's this tournament, though. The fact that all the youngsters, the local guys, then get a go. And should you get a go, you have this opportunity to put your best foot forward and then not only be selected for this uh, tournament, there's everybody who's watching. And any game that is on the television is being watched by just about everyone. Mm. Well, local conditions, so you should know them better. Yeah. So when they do get their chance, you hope they really kick on and entertain us. Give them catchers to catch in the stands. <laughs> okay, well, expressions of interest. That's what we're after from all the franchises as they look to finish off their squads. Will they, won't they? There's obviously the rookies to come as well. Let's get back to Ariella. Session two, gentlemen franchisees, thank you for your expression of interests. And we have two particular teams that have their full 17 squad, namely the Joburg Super Kings and Pretoria Capitals. So enjoy the nourishment on your tables. And we are now MI Cape Town. You have two slots to fill: Paul Royals, Sunrisers Eastern Cape, and Durban's Super Giants. You each have one slot to fill. So. Without further ado, we have acknowledged which teams are full, which ones have empty slots. The express auction will now be done in serial number order. We have a total of 17 names for those of you who would like to know. To our global audience, we trust you are having fun. To everyone in the studio, thank you again. Kicking off session two of what we refer to as the express auction, gentlemen, Opening up with number 12, Law Kentucker from Ireland. Do we have an opening bid at 175? 175 from Pole Royals, we have 175. 200,000, looking for 200,000. At 175 from Pole Royals, do we have 200,000? Any further advances? At 175,000, sitting with Pole Royals for the first, second, third and final, sold to Pole Royals for 175,000. Pearl Royals are now complete. Enjoy the nourishment. Serial number 18. Bayer's Swanepoel from South Africa, an all-rounder. 175. At 175, coming in from Sunrise's Eastern Cape. 175. Do we have a 200? 200,000 from Durban Supergiants. 200,000 Durban Supergiants. Back at you at 225. 225,000 with Sunrise's Eastern Cape. Back at you at 250, 250,000 with Durban Supergiants. Sunrise's Eastern Cape, do we have a 275? 275,000 we do. At 275,000 with Sunrise's Eastern Cape. 300,000, 300,000 Durban Supergiants. 325, 325,000 Sunrise's Eastern Cape. 350,000, 350,000 sitting with Durban Supergiants. 375, Sunrise's Eastern Cape. 
400,000 Durban supergiants. At 400,000 with Durban supergiants, do we have 425? 425,000 Sunrises Eastern Cape. Back at you at 450. 450,000 from Durban Supergiants. 475 Sunrises Eastern Cape. Do we see 475,000 Durban Supergiants? 500,000. 500,000 Sunrises Eastern Cape into new increments at 550. 550,000 Durban Supergiants. 600,000 Sunrises Eastern Cape. 650,000 we're looking for. At 600,000 sitting with Sunrises Eastern Cape, are you sure? For the first and the second, for the third and final call at 600,000 sitting with Sunrises Eastern Cape, sold and confirmed. Sunrises, your slots are now complete. You have your squad of 17. The next number, 26, Johan van Dijk, South African fast bowler at 175,000. Do we have an opening bid of 175,000? At 175,000, any opening bid? Passed. Number 64, part of the express list, Jonathan Bird from South Africa, a rookie, left-hand batter at 175,000. Jonathan Bird at 175,000. Opening bid of a 175, do we have 175? The bird has flown, passed at 175. Thank you for that humor. Number 91, Nuanido Fernando from Sri Lanka, age 23, right-hand batter, 175, at 175,000. Do we have an opening bid at 175? Looking at 175, at 175,000, passed. Number 126. Part of the express list, Matt Critchley from England, an all-rounder, opening bid at 425. At 425,000. Do we have an opening bid of 425? Looking for opening bid of 425,000 rand. Any advances? Passed. Thank you very much. Number 148. Jason Smith from South Africa, all-rounder, 175. Jason Smith. At 175,000, do we have any bids? At 175,000, 175, we have coming in from Durban Supergiants at 175. Do we have 200? 200,000 at 175. Do we have any further advances? At 175,000 for the first and the second, sitting with Durban Supergiants at 175,000, sold and confirmed for Jason Smith. Durban Supergiants, you are full. Number 149, Bryce Parsons from South Africa, a rookie all-rounder, 175. Do we have a 175? 175? 175? Passed. Number 150, Andile Similani, South African, rookie, age 20, 175,000. Do we have 175,000? 175? Any advances? Past. Number 160, Andile Mohokane. Mohokane from South Africa, an all rounder, 175. Looking for 175? Past. Number 163, Patrick Kruger, South African, age 28, all rounder. Patrick Kruger, opening bid, 175. 175? Past. Number 214, Nilan van Heerden, South African fast bowler right hand, 175,000. Do we have 175? 175 we have in my Cape Town. 175, I'm not going to say do we have further advances as we are sitting with, uh, my apologies, in my Cape Town, we have 175 at 175,000. Do we have 200,000? 200, 200,000, there's no one else to bid against. I thought so. Okay, so I was correct in my tabulation. At 175,000, can't make you bid against yourself. Sold and confirmed. You have one more slot to complete. And we are down to the last five. Number 215, Ronaldo Mayer. Fast bowler, Ronaldo Mayer. Do we have an opening bid at 175? MI Cape Town, do we have a 175? Passed. Process of elimination, 218. We now have Tristan Luce, 18 years old rookie. Beg your pardon? 
I shall. Thank you very much. Okay, we're just going to officially pass that one. And number 253, Thomas Carl, 31. We love it. Congratulations. <laughs> plan for your home and phones with free calls and data every month get two free mobile lines each with two free gigs 60 free minutes 100 free sms every month switch to rain one unlimited 5g home wi-fi plus free calls and data every month for two phones all for only 559 a month and you can buy now and pay later uh -huh. to give you the best takes the best, the best hands, the best handling, the best care, and the best conditions to bring you the best local fresh produce, the best of local, whatever it takes. Naeem Zin, thinking that well, should somebody else go for them, we might have to outbid them to get our rookie. Because if we're only the fifth pick in the rookie draft, he might be gone. So if somebody else goes for him in the rookie draft, in the express round, we might have to outbid them to get that guy. Uh, a lot of their names came up, they weren't taken, but I'm sure that we'll, their names will come out again. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, that's, that's obviously the first list. But you have, look, Liam Mulder came up, uh, Jonathan Bird came up, Russ Parsons came up. Connor uh, Estes. Um, Achille Clute, apparently there's big raps about him mm -hmm. um, so there's already five names that we've seen there and there's three names or four that have come up there so you've only got to pick six of these rookies um, so if you're in that rookie division and your names already popped up on the screen you've got to be a bit more excited than someone who's sitting maybe at the bottom of the list and hasn't been mentioned as yet because there's obviously some interest if you went back into that express auction yeah I've got to point out that you you've got to be 22 and under and not played in the as tournament today. before. Yeah, yeah, as of today. Yeah. yeah. 
Send it to us. So if you if you turned 23 yesterday, unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. So that's important. Also, what I must point out is that it goes in reverse order for those um, franchises in terms of where you finish. So the champions are going to pick last. I don't know if I agree with that, actually. <laughs> I think the champions should pick first, and they should get who they want, not the guys who finished last. I suppose it is written, first shall be last. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, it's the other way around. The last shall but be first. It's also yeah. interesting. Emma Cape Town got to choose the last two that they wanted, and yeah. now they get to choose the first, first rookie three, that right. they want. So it's almost like it hasn't even been an auction for them. They've got three, <laughs> three picks to take. This one, this one, this one. Thanks for coming. It's worked out beautifully for them. Yeah, just getting ready, all of them just getting ready. And essentially what they're trying to do is make sure that should they pick somebody, and that's before they kind of go into the draw, should you decide, oh, I want that one, and someone else take them and they're going before you, you've got to then have your second choice and your third choice up to your sixth choice so that you... Ah, doesn't matter, actually. You'll get someone and look after them. <laughs> Let's get there. Back to Aria. And she's back. <laughs> Gentlemen, you've had a couple of minutes. I'd like to go through... Given that this is the inaugural event of including the rookie draft in the auction session, taking Cricket SA truly into a new era. Gentlemen, I'm going to just reiterate a couple of key clauses that we went through yesterday evening, also for the benefit of the global audience. The rookies will attract a flat fee of 75,000 Rand. The criteria in order for them to qualify is that they need to be South African, either 22 or under as of today, and they have not previously been contracted with SA20. We are going to give the opportunity for each of the franchisees in the reverse order of season one to nominate their pick. So namely, the first pole position will be MI Cape Town, followed by Durban Supergiants, then on to Pole Royals, Joburg Super Kings, runner-up Pretoria Capitals, and finishing off with the winners Sunrises Eastern Cape. That is going to be the order. I would like to reiterate the clock, which will be pretty huge over here. You will have two minutes to make your decision and for you to raise your paddle. Once you have, Sean Pollock will come over in order to get your signed nomination. Please ensure you include the number and the name. Really important for our system to keep tabulating you. And should you allow that two minutes to pass, you will actually forfeit your position and you will go back to the bottom. So I encourage you to please keep that in mind, be mindful, and I will say, are you ready? And then confirm with the words, you are on the clock. So pretty straightforward, gentlemen, as we kick off rookie draft session, the final session of today's auction before we kick off on the 10th of Jan of 2024 with season two of Betway SA20, starting off MI Cape Town. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, you are on the clock. You can literally raise the paddle. Sean is looking for the exercise. Raise the paddle. And we have a decision from MI Capeton. Who is the number? We, we do indeed, Robin Peterson. Who is the rookie that you're going for? <laughs> R35, Connor Estazen. Connor Estazen, R35. Wicked Keeper Batsman, congratulations. The next up is Durban Supergiants. Are you ready? Going to wait for the camera to move to the side. Are you ready? May we start the clock? You are on the clock. When you're ready, raise your paddle. Okay, Durban Supergiants, who is your rookie? Bryce Parson. And the number? 
R11. R11, Bryce Parsons. R11, Bryce Parsons. All rounders sold to Durban Supergiants. R11, thank you. Up next, Paul Royals. You, are you ready? Okay, you are on the clock. And that paddle looks like it's about to be raised. It's raised already. Okay, to the Paul Royals. Who is your rookie of the year? R77, Luandre Pretorius. Luandre Pretorius. R77, Luandre Pretorius. Wicketkeeper batsman sold to the Paul Royals. Joburg Super Kings, we look at you now. Are you ready? And on the clock. <laughs> no one needs to be on the clock. They've all got it sorted. Faf. A chance to get like a bit of music going. <laughs> Faf, who's your rookie of the year? 105, Ronan Herman. Ronan Herman, 105. 105. Ronan sold to Joburg Super Kings. Pretoria Capitals, as the runners-up of last season. Are you ready? You are on the clock. No, no clock needed. I think no it's five needed. seconds is the longest. Jacques Ellis, who is your Rookie of the Year? Going with number 74, Steve Stolk. Steve Stolk, number 74. Steve Stolk, Rookie All-Rounder, sold and confirmed. And now we come to the final. The winners of last season, Sunrisers Eastern Cape. Are you ready? You're on the clock. And they're ready for their clock already. <laughs> Paddle has been raised. The champions from last year. Who is your last pick? Who is the sixth rookie? Number 150, Andil Simani. Simalani. Andile Simalani, 150. Well, Andile Simalani, sold and confirmed. Congratulations to all of you. You now have to Sunrise's Eastern Cape, sold and confirmed. All the six franchisees now have their squad of 17 plus one rookie. All that remains outstanding, which you have up until the end of December to negotiate is your wild card to give you your complete 19 squad. This officially concludes the Betway SA20 2023 selection for the 10th of Jan 2024 season. I'd like to thank you for your patience, your professionalism, your enthusiasm, your bidding, putting up with me. Everybody, it's really been an honor, privilege, and loads of fun. I ask before everyone, after everyone's left this room, as you come out, to turn right, go down the stairs to the Vista Room. There is refreshments, there is food, there is a lot of social interaction. I have no doubt everyone would love to engage with you. So a round of applause to all of you, and thank you. Okay. Thank you very much to Ariella Cooper. Nicely done. Uh, the business of the day done. Uh, the teams ready with their teams, with all their players, right? Essentially, there's still an issue of wild cards, I guess, that we must find out. But they have time to let us all know, and they will let us all know when they have um, spoken to those they must speak to. Anyone you think has done the best business? Is there ever such a thing, guys? I think uh, I think it was Durban Super Giants for me uh, with uh, Diane Khalim and Romario uh, Shepard. I think those were two very good acquisitions. Uh, all rounders can bowl the new ball as well. Uh, come in in the late order and clear the boundary. So. A good couple of acquisitions, I think. There's a look at Durban Super Giants. And they there's didn't that get sign Kalim, on the they? right. No, they didn't get Kalim. They were bidding for him. No, they didn't. I think he went to... Didn't he, didn't he go to Pretoria, yeah, he Pretoria Capitals? Capitals. Capitals? No, he went to Joburg Super Kings, Diane Khalim, for 1.6. Oh, yeah. But that sign on John John Smut's name, that's got a swap. It's going across the floor. And he swapped with Simon Harmer, who went from Durban Super Giant all the way across to Sunrisers. Yeah. I mean, the, the funny thing about the Durban Super Giants is last season, we almost felt like there were too many all-rounders. I mean, they even had Jason Holder, um, who was part of their, their team. And we felt like there wasn't enough definition of the roles. And everyone was kind of playing a part. 
but there was no specialist. So it was a little bit of a surprise. John John Smuts, I thought he had a decent tournament for Sunrise's Eastern Cape. I don't think he was too bad at all and made some good contributions. But he does play for the Dolphins, and obviously Durban is his home ground now. So that was why they made that acquisition. He's got the left arm option. Um, but I think the purchases that they made, Nicholas Puran, I think is massive. Uh, yeah. Roger Paxa, they bought him as well. And uh, Nabi Nulhak. So those are the different guys that they've purchased. And, and I think it does look like a balan better balanced side than what we saw in the last time. Can we pick an 11 out of these? And, and I ask because of Nicholas Puran, who, you know, I guess he'll be a, a sort of number three. Kyle Mayer's Quinton Dakar. Yeah. But what about availability? Because let's throw in West Indies and, and kind of try and work that out. Banuka Rajapaksa brought into that side. Heinrich Klaas, class, eh? class, absolute mm. class. And, and no doubt they'll be looking forward to perhaps another century from him. If they get a century from him, it means the top order hasn't gone that well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Matthew Bretzka is a name that stands out for me. Didn't get a lot of opportunity at the start of the competition last time around. But when he did get an opportunity, he, he, he looked pretty good. And I'm sure they'll be looking to use him more often this time around. Carl Abbott also was in their squad but didn't play. He was getting married, I think. I think it was something around that time. So he's an addition who's very experienced. Vian Mould has gone really well domestically in the, in the county circuit. And we're interesting to see who they go with from a captaincy perspective. There was talk. No, they've gone with um, Keshav Maharaj. Yes. Yeah, they, yeah, they swapped that captaincy around, said yes. that Quinton de Kopp has got too much on his plate, keeping, batting and captaining. And so I think Keshav that's a Maharaj. good decision. Yeah, Home ground is. for him as well, local boy, yeah. understands the local conditions. Um, so Jason Smith also playing for the Dolphins, Bryce Parsons playing for the Dolphins currently. So all those kind of decisions make sense. Uh, and it's almost like a bit of a, a Durban flavor to this team. Dwayne yeah, okay. Pretorius, he went really well in the yeah, final. He won it. Won so I think they've still got those all-rounders. I just think your people at the top of the order and your balanced batters like a Nicholas Puran, Klaas and de Kock really need to take responsibility. And then the bowling thing, Junior Dala, I mean, he's experienced, played a lot for South Africa. Maybe he gets a gig as well. But it just does look like a bit of balance. Yeah, Navi Nulhat, not bad either. Yeah, it takes they've wickets got, for the new ball. Yeah, they've got some good tools. Vian Mulder, Kimo Paul. It is a team of all-rounders. So, yeah, we'll see how they go, but decent enough for acquisitions. And what was it you said? Continuity. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And they've done well to kind of keep their squad together and keep working with them. On to the Joburg Super Kings. That's and there's cool Diane was. Khalil. Yeah, that's the team, Joburg Super Kings, who got the both Diane Khalil and Romario Shepard. Two fantastic acquisitions, all round ability. New ball bowlers, death bowlers, and hard hitting down the lower middle order. Sort of lengthens the batting lineup, coming in maybe number eight, nine. Um, brilliant acquisitions, those two. And then Moen Ali who was a, um, a pre signing as well. Uh, he's a fantastic uh, addition. Yeah, David Visa, also a pre signing. Yeah, yeah. I suppose Ronan Herman is the, is the one when you look there, you don't see any wiki keeping gloves, it's just him. So who else can do that option? Uh, I don't know if Lewis Deploy or maybe even a Wayne Madsen, Madsen. can do the wicket-keeping role. So yeah. that might be part. Zahir Khan, he's added as well. Sam Cook, I don't know too much about him. I've heard he's come with big raps from the England setup. So those were all their pre-signings. So I agree with you. They did some good pre-signings, yeah. and then they also did pretty well in this auction. Yeah, and, and I guess it, the pre-signing and what's in the auction is essentially the business, not just what's happened not here today. Yeah. And here today was just topping up and finishing off their squads yeah before we sort of wrap up with all the rest let, let's get outside the rest of our teams out there Mobile, who are you with what are you doing what's going on out there happy people not so happy people let us know listen for me that was amazing we had absolutely an amazing season two auction you know you and i did it last year it was big but this one was also very intimate very good because how do you feel about it I mean, it was a little smaller than last year, but I mean, you still saw some great guys going away. Matthew Post, over a million rand as a rookie. That was amazing. The first ever rookie draft. I mean, this was, was an awesome auction. I mean, this is an amazing tournament, and I can't wait for season two in Jan. We're talking to ourselves while well, we've been here before. We need to talk to our newbies, who are actually <laughs> our rookies. How do you guys feel about the experience? Hope, talk to me. 
No, I love the experience. I would have liked to actually have some of my better self for more, you know, but yeah, Andre there took all the spotlight having the biggest bit of the evening. But it was amazing, man. It was just, I'm super excited to actually be a part of the SA20 coming next year. And look, we've spoken to a couple of the players themselves, Corbin Bosch to be specific, and his move to a different team is pretty interesting. And I'm looking forward to see how he'll perform in that next team. Well, I think personally for me, it's the aspirations that, you know, each team has, you know, having a little talk with uh, Jacques Callis, you know, he's speaking about the aspirations and what he looks forward to and, you know, all of that for, um, you know, the Pretoria Capitals. It's something that um, it's very inspiring and I'm really looking forward to experiencing it uh, come next season. I know you just said because it's sold. You're unsold now. You're unsold. That's what you said. Aspirations. But listen, the auction might have been more intimate, but the SA20 League continues to be bigger and better. We're looking forward to the Betway SA20 League going forward into 2024. Pommy, back to you. Thank you, Mobile. Thank you to all of you out there. Actually, yeah, we've kind of multiplied in here. Uh, <laughs> a whole lot of runs in here now. <laughs> Mahela, how are you? Very good, Pami. Very good. Yeah, you happy with the business? Yeah, no, definitely. I think um, I think a lot of people probably wanted us to do a lot more things, but I think you know, MI has always been consistent. I think we had a really good squad um, last year. We had a few injuries especially our main players, but they are all going to be available this year fully. So, Levy is going to be there, uh, Joffre is going to be there, so we didn't want to make too many changes. The important thing for us is role clarity, make sure that you know guys uh, fit into those roles that we wanted them to be. Um, even last year, we probably were one game off getting into those playoffs, it was a tight one. But um, we are very happy with the, the group that we've got, skill set is very good. Um, so apart from Rash, who's probably missed the first two, three games for international duty, everyone else is available. We'll probably bring someone in, maybe, who knows, Polly, <laughs> for a few games. And then, not this Polly. Not this Polly, the other Polly. <laughs> I was going to say, goodness. <laughs> and then, back the what are you trying to yeah. say, Mike? <laughs> back the years, my boy. <laughs> yeah, so I think we just want to be consistent, that's all. Okay. The global view is what I'm interested in. Um, it was, was it you was talking to Devald early on, and he was talking about being in the MI family, and the fact that it's not just India, it's not just South Africa, it's kind of all around the world, and, and how to ensure there's synergy between all of those. Yeah, I mean, if you take all our teams, it's quite consistent with the group that we're using across the board, um, depending on their international availability. but. Um, Bravis is a classic example. We just want to grow him to a role that we want him to play within the MI family, and he's nicely settling into that. Um, short glimpses of what he can do in US. Um, he's playing with some of the most experienced T20 cricketers. He's learning every day. Um, it's the same with others as well. I mean, Polly has been absolutely brilliant. Bolt has been the same. So we had some success in, in one year period with our global franchises. We won two tournaments um, with the women's and obviously in US and we just need to keep striving for that to make sure that you know we are consistent winning to playing to win tournaments. I, I, I also am interested in the balance you talked about the development of someone like um, Devil Brevis I'm gonna take you back what were you 17 years old when you started for Sri Lanka sort of Sri Lanka a side play against all those touring teams and the nurturing of that so that when you got into a team, into the national side, you were actually ready. So even though you were sort of 19, 20 years old, you were going. How to do that in 2020 cricket, which is, it seems quite hard actually, because the skills are sort of punishing. When you fail, it's like, oh, what's he doing? And when you succeed, it's like, boom, bang, away you go. So quite tough. It is tough, but, but with domestic tournaments, like say, for example, the IPL, where we have groomed a lot of young players who have been in our system for a couple of years before they sometimes make the ranks unless they're ready they would just break was one of, one of those cases that you know he joined uh, Mumbai before he even played for state cricket or whatever um, Tilak Varma is another case that you know within a year he's played for India since being with us for two years so we want to nourish that and that's something that MI will do and it's the same with uh, MI Cape Town we have Pravis who we 
caught him under our wings and we wanted to get him through. We're quite excited about um, Connor that we've signed. I think he's, he's a great prospect going forward. So hopefully we can groom that. Um, so we have invested and that's something that we will keep on doing with all these domestic franchises and as a, as a, as a global franchise. And, and the challenge of someone like a Nicholas Puran, you've got him in, in America and he comes out and has an absolute blinder in the final. And then unfortunately you can't have him here in South Africa. Yeah, unfortunately, but he's going to play for us in UAE. So okay. he's committed, okay. he played last season um, for us. So obviously it's difficult for us to get all these guys in, in one tournament. So hopefully, you know, we have an opportunity to, you know, have that option available. Unfortunately, the two tournaments do clash this year. So um, Nicky is playing for us in, in UAE, so that's one of the reasons. I know he's going to make a small appearance, I heard here, but um, uh, but, um, <laughs> but it's not going to be too damaging for us. <laughs> See, th this is why we like you to come here, because you <laughs> give us the inside scoop. Okay. But, but listen, more importantly, Tristan Stubbs and Brevis, can you really get them primed and play an unbelievable cricket so that when this tournament's finished, we just slot them straight into the South African side? And everything goes down. Can you can you just do it? Even if we beat Sri Lanka, you, it doesn't matter. You guys have been taking them on other tours as well, apart yeah. from T20 leagues. You've been taking them to the UK and doing some development, playing under different conditions and getting accustomed to that. Yeah, I mean we're using our all our experienced coaches to come and work with them as well. It's like I said, it, it, it's a long-term uh, goal for us to make sure the guys we have, the ones we are going to develop, are, are part of MI and and their development is part and parcel of that. Yeah, I mean. I mean, Tristan and Pravis both now playing A-team cricket. They played for South Africa as well. So we're very, very happy. And this all happened in a 12-month span since we've signed them on. So that means the way we've scouted and Marco was another classic case. In, in You know, no one knew about the, the Marco and Duan. And so we, we'll just keep doing that. I think, you know, that's that's what MI is all about and, and we'll keep on challenging ourselves to find the We'd young also, talent. We'd also like to thank Mahala for agreeing that they were better three and four for the whole tournament. So thank you. <laughs> thank you for doing that. I appreciate that. <laughs> that's something that you need to work with the South African okay. team. Okay. Not with MI. <laughs> and their domestic teams. Okay. Just giving you a heads we'll up. Try. Yeah, and I wanted to ask about your role because you're not just with like one of the teams, you're kind of global here, aren't you? And sort of overseeing the whole. What is your role? What's it called? A title or whatever? And exactly what is it you're kind of looking after? Um, the title is um, head of high performance. I mean, the main role is to make sure that we have consistency across all our teams um, when it comes to um, strategy, um, setting up teams, um, the coaches. Um, you know how we want to play the brand of cricket we want to play um, so that's part of it um, it's been just under 12 months um, since I've been asked to do the uh, challenge for me um, learning every day on that uh, working with all the other guys but it's been um, exciting to see the least because I get to see a lot of talent now um, across the board and and get to travel to places and and see the conditions and how we want to set up things and, and it's something very unique and we all like with global franchises you know setting up it's all new to all of us um, enjoying it and something I'd throw up sort of on the table for everybody is to say talent spotting right you're you're looking for who's not known who you can nurture because you see something there and the number of times you're kind of hit or miss because you're not entirely sure you're kind of taking a punt on the things you see initially and and how hard it is to do that from a scouting perspective i mean it is hard but i think you know we've we've got a lot of good scouts working for us across the board in all the countries that's something that mi started with the ipl a long time ago um and i think Polly was involved when when he was with in Mumbai, I mean, we were the first to start that scouting program, and it has actually helped us a lot, especially Bumras, the Pandya brothers, um, Tilak, Ishan, all those guys, you know, they've come through that scouting program. Um, so it's something that we believe in, and now the platform is set for us to do that um, overseas. Um, we've set up that, we've, we've looking at all these players, um, and yes, like you said, you know, some will work for us, some not. Hopefully, the percentages are going to be in our yeah. favor. Yeah.
and all you want is a chance, isn't it? And I ask that because I think, you know, you, you kind of look at the number of cricketers and you guys, you sort of go back in, in your minds at the people you might have played cricket with, whom you might have thought might have gone further. Not necessarily because they were really good then, but they just had something and just didn't get a go along the line and, and therefore don't make it well, anywhere. The, the real interesting thing is, is talking about the program in India. I mean, there are some unknown of individuals, talented individuals, mm. scattered in the country. In South Africa, we, we pretty much had under 15, 17, 19, have an idea of who our next rock stars are. But that's the exciting thing about the, the, the scouts in India, is but that coming, they'll come up with... Yeah, but coming back to you as well, we've missed, like, in the sense that we've identified those talent, but, like, the IPL, we can't have them. Mm. Every three years, it's a big auction. Yeah. So they've gone to other franchises and done well, played for India. So that means we know that our program was successful identifying them as a younger, younger yeah. age. So that means that, yes, the system works, so we need to try and keep them for a longer period till they uh, get better. Um, but that's a challenge for us going forward. Yeah, thanks, Mahela. Thanks for taking the time to speak to us. Um, and all the best with the scouting and so forth. And all the best with the season. We don't want you at the bottom of the table, by the way. <laughs> yeah, you got to sort that out. Reset, Rockstar reset, team. Reset all the time. Don't worry. All right, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Take it easy. Thanks. There's Thanks a look at their side. MI Cape Town. Chris Benjamin in. Devil Brevis, wonderful player, and still trying to find his feet, I'll say. Innings here and there to sort things out for MI Cape Town or for MI New York, as was the case after Pollard got injured. Tom Banton in, that's important. Um, Rusty van Addison and Ryan Rickleton, as well as Grant Rulofsson, all those were there before. Connor Estes, and he said, oh, looking forward to seeing how Connor goes because they're excited about him. Neilan van Heerden. What you would say about Mahila is when we do the Sri Lankan names, we also sometimes just go with the first name. I know, I know it's just that you just call them Connor. <laughs> Esther Hazen might Hold be a on. bit more challenging. <laughs> Thomas yeah. Kaber, I think those are the surprise selections. I mean, they'll want more from Sam Curran. Liam Livingston was injured, so they'll get plenty more from him. Um, rock stars. Like, looking mm. through those names, rock star team. Well, absolutely, and you felt that because there are so many rock stars, they had most of them last season as well, it felt as if the, they, they felt obligated to play all of them, they didn't get any sort of continuity in the tournament, so Kahi Sorabada would be available. Initially, it was so much uncertainty whether he was going to play that first game, he eventually played and then he didn't play for a while and then Jofra there was a lot of chopping and changing and they never got things going in terms of continuity. Well, you look, you put Archer, Rabada, Curran and Rashid Khan. Yeah, I mean, that's good not, luck. That's not bad just to have as a foursome. And you've got Liam Livingston can throw in a few overs. You've got George Linder who might be a good South African option. Devil Brevis can bowl. I mean, mm, nasty. Olive Stone. I think we can put our houses on the fact. We're not saying that they're going to win because we touched the money last year. But they're definitely not coming last. Yeah, they'll do <laughs> yeah after one season, they'll do better than they did. The hope is that everybody is fit. Archer injured, remember? Liam Livingston had to pull out because he was injured. Sam Curran, after going so well, winning the World Cup for... For England, he, he did give a little bit away. He did give a little bit away there with Rashid Khan and, yeah. and the fact that he might not be available initially at the beginning. And the, and the issue with that again is that he's a captain. They do have a lot of continuity with their captains. You mentioned Polly, not the one next to me, mm. but uh, Kieran Pollard, obviously, come in potentially wild. in. Yeah, not as a wild card, uh, as, as, as a, a replacement. replacement. Yeah. And he would probably fill that role as a as a captain, captain as well. Is. It's it was something that surprised us last year when. Right at the end, all of us sat there and said, they're going to pick a captain. They're going to pick somebody to captain this side. Because as we looked at it, whilst they're those capable of captaining, they don't essentially captain all the time. And it's an important part, isn't it, Absolutely. in 2020, yeah, in I, any form of cricket? I think it makes sense, Pollard coming for the first three. Not only that, he played at, at Cape Town, didn't he, for two yeah, seasons, did, yeah. I think, domestically. And he's got no real ego about himself now. He's played so much cricket that he would quite easily fit in there with most of the guys he knows, be able to lead them for three or four games and then move over when Rashid Khan, the MVP of all time, yeah. decides to pop by. 
So anyway, it's a good side. Yeah, it is a good side. And this is not to say any other sides are, aren't good. Let's move on to the next. Um, and as we go through them, it's just like, well, this is a decent side as well. Look at these Paul Royals. Well, we said last season, didn't we, about their batting lineup, David Miller, Josh Butler, Jason Roy. Jason Roy is one Smarty. for me who didn't get it going, and he'll be keen to, to put things right. Dane Villas, he's just retired over in England, so he'll have a lot of uh, time to concentrate on his gig with uh, the Paul Royals. Van Buren, some young, exciting young South African talent in that lineup. Their spinners were were very influential. Tabray Samji and Bjorn Fortein. Bjorn yeah. Fortein, particularly with a new ball. Top wicket taker. He was yeah. fantastic. He was, he was outstanding. And then a lot of uh, local talent for Risco Adams. Evan Jones, he took a lot of wickets in the, um, at the, uh, throughout the competition. And then Fabian Allen, I, I've always liked him all action type of cricketer when he bowls he takes wickets he comes and hits the ball out the ground towards the end and in the field he's electric as well yeah. uh, so good signing Le another left arm orthodox in par i yeah. think we might see uh upward of 12 yeah, overs yeah. of spin that was the only surprise for me actually and i saw favor now because they've got 14 and shamsey yeah so i mean those would be stock standard bankers i would think to play every game but um obviously the way that surface played last year you know, if someone is injured, Fabian Allen can definitely play a part. I've just, I mean, you've got the experience there, haven't you, of Miller and Butler. And they didn't really fire. And I just hope their surface is a little bit better. Because if you get them a good pitch, there's no doubt your Butlers, your Roys, your Millers um, can have a massive impact. Look, and Tucker, not a bad yeah. option as well as a backup. I've seen some good things from him on the international stage. Yeah, I was going to say, Fabian Allen also just plays a batter, actually. Yeah. Not, not play as a sort of all round and contribute with the spin. If it spins, you go with it, but if it doesn't, it, can, it hits a long ball for sure. Right, on we go. And we go to the Pretoria Capitals, the uh, losing finalists they were, and they had a really good season. And as we went along, we actually would have thought it was them who was gonna win it. Phil Salt is a name that's not there who absolutely blitzed it to all parts. And in partnership with Will Jacks, gave them really good starts. They'll be hoping for the same. Their acquisition of Kyle Verena. I'm looking through then as the only one who's got... Well, that's what we're looking at. This and despite going for like just 175, you'd be happy about the fact that you're the main guy there. Yeah, you're the absolutely. keeper. I mean, all of a sudden, he looks like he goes straight into a, a starting eleven there, um, from you know having been released by Joburg Super Kings, and he's quite versatile in that he can bat anywhere in the top six. Um, ideally, you want him to go in earlier, but they got many options. They got loads of options in terms of the batting lineup. The one thing you would say about that side, it's important that they get himself a good physio, because Andre Knokia and Wayne Parnell are crucial to their yeah. success. They both have to be on the park and they both had some niggles. Uh, Wayne Parnell even had one in the tournament last year. Yeah. Parnell captained nicely. Um, so I think they need to make sure if they get everyone fit, there's no doubt. I mean, also excited to see how this Matthew boasts. There was a lot of interest for him and a lot of bidding. Um, what sort of opportunity he gets. And I'm sure the Bosch family will be very happy. They only have to support one team this year. They can uh, get behind Ethan and Corbin um, and the Pretoria Capitals. Will Jack, he was brilliant, wasn't he? he? Was, so, yeah. you know, he'll come back. Actually, you were talking about Full Salt. He kind of went off the boil once Will Jack's left. They had struck such a good partnership up front. But once he lost his partner, he wasn't as effective. Um, and they were the pick, there's no yeah. doubt for me. Yeah. The Pretoria Capitals, if you had to go on consistency, best performances, they were the ones. Yeah. But they didn't produce it on finals. Yeah. yeah, Adil Rashid, I'm looking in there to see which names you'd be quite happy with. Adil Rashid, Riley Rousseau is gone in 2020 mm -hmm. cricket. He absolutely blitzes it. So it'd be interesting to watch him and see how he goes this time around. Darren Dupavillon added, and Jimmy Neesham. <laughs> I love watching him. Go, 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 get Ed Gadget on. Gadget on. <laughs> there you go. He's involved in some way or other. If it's not fielding, he'll take a wicket here. He'll if take it's a catch. He'll take a catch somewhere. He'll smash one out the ground somewhere. Yeah, good acquisition to have and a decent look inside. So that's good. And for all those teams, we've looked at them and said, hey, these are not so bad. So this is good. It means it makes for 
um, good competition in the tournament. On to the champions. Sunrisers Eastern Cape. Aiden Markham, the skipper. David Milan comes in. I think he's a really good buy. You I know. think he is a very good buy. And, and it's an area where at the start of the competition, they didn't have a good start in their opening partners. Uh, they did then promote Rossington, who came off quite nicely for them. He was a, a top player for them in the end of the tournament. So better starts. And Tristan Stubbs, the big money signing from last year, he admitted this evening about the pressure that that brought. I still think he's a fantastic player. And, you know, from last season not quite hitting his steps, him coming into form, he will definitely bolster that team. They got a couple of all-rounders uh, in Bayer Swanepoel. And it was their, their signing, the pre-signing, Craig Overton yeah. from England. So a couple of all-rounders that have boosted that, that team alongside Marco Janssen. So, yeah, good, good acquisitions. Uh, Sisanda Magala, who did well for them up at the top of yeah. the bowling order and right at the back as well. They just kind of seemed to get going in the tournament, didn't they? Just sort of uh, little things here and there. And as you looked at them, you wouldn't have said, oh, this is the team. Yes, they're the most expensive player, but uh, greater than the sum of their parts in the end to win it. Yeah, they've got Simon Harmer. He's, he was um, swapped over. The only blow is obviously Rulof van der Merwe. I mean, yeah, we just loved commentating on him. He was, he was the, the magic orange genie that rocked up and turned their season around. So they'll be sad to see him go. But if you put a team together of the likes of Magala, Janssen, um, you know, Harmer, Overton, Overton, and then you've got all those batters on the left-hand side, I think the key for them will be being able to adapt to the conditions there at St. George's Park because they are unique. And if you as a team can get your, your home games nailed down, then that's where they're going to be um, really be able to, to compete again wow. and try and go in and win it for the second time. Right, we're done. Our duties are done. You know, we're the auction essay. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Before that, we've got a World Cup, of course. <laughs> I, you kind of forget, don't you? Like, yeah, here we are. We've got all absorbed in it. And got, but hold on. We've got to wait a little bit before all this action can begin. Now, look at the fixtures. Kerbecha, why? Because the Sunrisers Eastern Cape are the champions they're defending champions they'll start up against the joburg super kings that's on the 10th of january 5 30 have a look at the starts there 5 30 p.m starts durban super giants against mi cape town that's in durban and then paul royals against the pretoria capital in paul 10th, 11th, and 12th. What you would say about the fixtures is they said that it's going to be no afternoon games midweek. Mm -hmm. There's going to be double headers on Saturday and three o'clock starts on Sunday. So they've tried to accommodate to make sure people come, obviously with an eye of that they've still got school to go to <laughs> in the first week of January. Yeah, and also that there were so many who missed out last time mm. because of it all and couldn't quite juggle. Now, where are you? What, what month are we in September? Just about towards the end of September. It gives you a whole lot of time to plan, right? And make sure that you're there. You don't want to miss out on the action. And there was a whole lot of action last season. The crowds for me were fabulous. I think it was the best part, actually. It yeah. was. And I mean, it was, you know, we all had our sort of uncertainties how many of them are going to pitch up mm. uh, it was absolutely fantastic um the vibes at the ground uh they will all say they had the best atmospheres <laughs> yeah <laughs> there'll be competition again this absolutely year. absolutely yeah. fantastic orange army i look forward to seeing them again in amongst the band in pe mm. mm -hmm. fantastic all that's left to say is bring on season 2.0 there you go <laughs> two point sa20 2.0. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Ash. Thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you soon. Goodbye.
the legacy in the all-new Suzuki Grand Vitara. Starting from only 339.900. T's and C's apply. Hello, Rainwan is calling. It's one plan for your home and phones. With free calls and data every month. Get two free mobile lines. Each with two free gigs, 60 free minutes, 100 free SMS every month. Switch to Rain One. Unlimited 5G home Wi-Fi plus free calls and data every month for two phones. All for only five five nine a month. And you can buy now and pay later. Uh-huh. With over 5,000 markets.